Hey there, welcome to another huge project where we will be using Laravel, Pusher, TypeScript, Vue 3 and Quasar to build an amazing full stack real time chat app. In order for you to be able to code along with me, make sure that you have a running instance of MySQL. Then also make sure you have Quasar and Laravel globally available. Then please install Vue DevTools. We need them for debugging. And then we will be installing a few other packages as we go. So don't worry about this. And yeah, what are we building? We are building a separate backend and frontend. The backend is a complete REST API using Laravel Sanctum for authentication. The API will be able to broadcast events using private and presence channels to communicate in real time with our front end. For the implementation of the real time functionality, we will be using Pusher. We use private and present channels, so only authenticated users can listen to the events coming from our Laravel REST API. The power of present channels allows us to display a notification once a user joins or leaves a room. For the front end, we are utilizing the awesomeness of Quasar, which is built on top of Vue 3 in combination with TypeScript to build a unique responsive UI. For state management, we will be using Pina. All right, let's start coding. I have an empty directory here, nothing in here. And what we will be doing is we will be creating a new Laravel project. So let's say Laravel new, and then we name the folder backend. Now let's create a new Quasar project. npm init Quasar. Here we choose the first option. The name of our project folder, front end. We use the first option here, Quasar version 2 and view 3. We use TypeScript and we use Quasar app CLI with white. Package name, front end. And here we can say real time chat app. And as description, a beautiful real time chat app. Then here we choose the second option, composition API with script setup. Here's the first option, says with SCSS syntax. And here we choose the first thing, then we go down, then we press the right arrow key to select Pina or Pina. Then we go to Axios and push again the right arrow key of our keyboard to select it. And then we can hit enter. Here we can choose prettier. And here we say we use NPM. Now let's start out by implementing the API endpoints for registering, logging in and logging out. So let's say cd backend and then we type code empty space dot and this will bring up Visual Studio Code and here's our Laravel project. Let's go to the terminal and type php artisan serve. And we already should have our Laravel app running. Here it is, yeah. Now let's go to the env file. I changed the database name because I have already a database with the name of backend. So I name it chat app YouTube in my case. But you can leave it as it is, yeah, doesn't matter. Then also we need to change the broadcast driver. 
since we are using Pusher. So here we need to type Pusher. And then also make sure to sign up for Pusher because we will be working with Pusher to integrate real-time functionality into our chat app. And yeah, Pusher is amazing. It's very simple to integrate with Laravel and it is um, free, yeah? So it's free for testing. We don't have to pay anything. We can test it a lot, yeah? And we don't run into any costs. But later, when we start to implement Pusher, then I will show you everything in detail, yeah? So later, you need to make sure that you have your credentials in here, yeah? And you get them by signing up um, for Pusher. Okay, now we are good here. Let's close this. Now let's go to our user model. And in here, we need to update this fillable array. Here we need to add the avatar URL. And we are good for now. Later, we need to add some relationships here, but more to that um, when we are about to integrate the functionality. So here, let's close it. Now let's go to our create users table migration here. And we need to update it since we have a new column, which is our avatar URL here, right? Now we are good with that. Now what we can do is we can open up a new terminal window and say php artisan make controller and then auth controller. And then also that we don't forget it, let's say PHP artisan migrate. This will create a new database and it will create all the tables with the columns. All right, now let's close this window here and let's go to our auth controller. And in here we will be creating three methods, register, log in, and log out. Let's start with the register function. And now I want to show you something cool. Yeah, instead of having a request like this, let's do something else. Let's say PHP artisan make request and now let's say auth request or maybe register request. Now let's go to the register request. Let's close this terminal here. And here you see we can apply some rules and let me paste them in here. Yeah, so we will have a name, email, and password. For the case a uh, new user is registering. And here we apply some rules. We check, for example, if the name is no longer than 255 characters, if it's a string. We check whether the user has written anything. And then for the email, for example, we can also check um, whether the email is unique and a bunch of other stuff, it's really cool. And here we have to say return true, otherwise the user will be never authenticated. And now let's close this register request and let's go back here and instead of this request we can use register request like this and make sure to import it. And the cool thing about this here is now, since we have provided rules here, we don't need to do any um, validation here. Yeah? Here we can directly say 
encrypt password. Yeah. So we can save it in our database. We don't want to store plain passwords in our database. So here we can say request merge password and then we simply decrypt it. Then after this, we can directly create a user. Yeah, user create. And then here maybe we say validated, but all should work out as well. And we have to import the user model. Now let's create a success array with a token and user key. And here we create a token. And this is all handled by Laravel Sanctum, which is already installed here. So it's really cool and really easy to implement authentication yeah, with Laravel. So we don't need to do much here. And when looking into our database, you will see that we have this personal access tokens table here. And this is handled by Laravel Sanctum. Now you see here we have a user resource. We don't have it at the moment. So let's create a resource. PHP artisan make resource. User resource. And you might be wondering why we are using a resource here. The reason is a resource helps us to customize this user model here. Yeah? In this case, this user model has some predefined properties or columns, so to speak. Yeah? It has these columns. But what if we don't want to return a password or a remember token or if we want to add other properties? Yeah? Then this user resource is very helpful to customize this user thing here, right? So let's go to the user resource. And in here, we can return an array. And in our case, we will be returning an ID, name, email, avatar URL, and created ad. Yeah? That's enough for us. We don't want to send back the passwords and stuff like this to the front end. We don't need that. And let's import the user resource in our auth controller. Here it is. And then we can say return response JSON. And now let's say user and then success user and then we do the same for the token and since we created a new user let's say 201 now let's create another method public function login and here we will be using the standard request You could also create a custom request, but I want to show you different ways. And here we will be doing the validation within the login method. So let's say validator. We can create a validator by saying validator, validator, which comes from support for sites. And then we have to say make. And then request all, comma. And here we have to provide an array. So the user will be sending an email and a password from the front end. And again, here's the email. Maybe we can provide some further rules here. We can check whether the email exists in the database or not. This is very important. 
And now let's say if validator fails, then we want to do an early return. We can use error code of 422 and we can provide the errors array. Now, if we are pass this block of code, we know email and password were correct. Yeah, these rules were not heard. So here we can say if os attempt, here we have to pass in validator validated. And then also here, we can say return response. And then we simply say invalid credentials maybe. Maybe let's make it a little bit different here. Let's say message invalid credentials like this. So what are we doing here? First of all, we check whether email and password complied to these rules. If this is the case, we try to log in the user by using validator.validated, which are the validated fields. Yeah, so in this case, email and password. And we try to log in the user. And this only works if not only email and password comply to these rules, but also the provided password from the front end fits the password in our database. Yeah? And if this doesn't fit, then again, we return an early response with invalid credentials. If we are passing this block of code here, then we know we have a user which is authenticated and we can get this user here with this line of code. And now again, we do basically the same as above. So I can grab these three code blocks here and paste them in down below. Now let's quickly implement the lockout method. Here again, we have the request as argument. And then we say request user current access token delete. And then we can return locked out. Yeah. And what this line will be doing is it will be deleting the access token from our personal access tokens table here. Yeah? And by doing so, we are locked out, so to speak. Now let's go to our api.php file. And in here, we can delete this line. And then we can have two routes here, register and log in. And these routes will be available for all users, yeah? Even for the users that are not logged in. And this makes sense because the user who is not logged in should be able to register and log in. And these are our two routes that are not protected by Laravel Sanctum. Now we will have many, many routes that are protected by Sanctum. And we can apply the auth sanctum middleware to all the routes that should be protected by using this group function here, or group method, I should say. And in here, we will have our lockout, yeah? 
So only logged in users should be able to log out. And we will have many other routes in here, but for now we are good with this. Now what we can say is, let's open up our terminal and type php artisan optimize. And we need to make sure, yeah, it's very important, otherwise we get an error and I always forget it. We need to import the auth controller here. And now we have to do it again. Otherwise this file will be not updated and we get errors. All right, now we are done with our backend implementation of the auth functionality. Now let's head to the front end and implement the functionality there. In order to start with our front end project, let's go to the CMD here and let's type CD empty space dot dot to go one step back and then let's say CD front end and then again code empty space dot to open up our Quasar project. And the cool thing is we have already access in here and also our router. Yeah. It's all pre-configured for us and even we have Pioneer pre-configured for us here. And we will be using all of that and much more. So let's get started with our front end. So I would say let's get started with routing. Let's create a few more pages. So let's go to pages and in here we have already the index page and let's add two other pages. A login page dot view and register page dot view. Let's add a template in here and let's say register in the register page and log in in the login page. Now let's also create a few components. I think two to be precise for now. Let's say chat window dot view and here again template chat window and then also room list dot view template room list. Now let's implement routing. Let's go to our routes. And in here let's customize it. Here we are using the index page. We Actually, we don't need this index page, I think. Yeah, actually, we don't need this index page here. So let's get rid of this. And then we have this children array here, which is correct. And then we will be having a few components that will be rendered for the main layout here. Yeah, I paste them in. So here we have one object and it has the path of rooms and then this rooms object has another children array. And in here we have two other objects. Yeah, One goes to this path and then the other one goes to room ID messages. And this is a dynamic parameter. Yeah, This can be any number. And you will see how this works in a bit. Now, yeah, we want to make use of another layout. Let's create it. Guest layout dot view. And in here we paste this in. We have these Quasar components. They provide us with super cool responsiveness. And then we have this router view. And this is for basically injecting our components 
yeah, or our pages into this layout. <laughs> Besides that, we will have another object with a different path of guest, yeah? And this is for people who are not logged in, yeah? And here we will be using this guest layout and then we will have the path of register and log in, which points to our register and login page. And the reason why we have these two layouts is because when heading to the main layout, we will be able to create rooms and to join a room and to chat, yeah? And this shall be available only to users who are logged in, yeah? And for the case that we have users that are not logged in, then we want to show the guest layout and the guest layout will not have a navigation and stuff like this, which leads us to the room list and stuff like this, yeah? And also these routes will be protected, so we can't reach them and we will be always redirected to the login page, yeah? For the case that we are not logged in. All right, and yeah, this is done by a route guard and we will be implementing this next. So let's close all these files here because we don't need them anymore. And let's go to router index. And now above this router object here, let's implement a route guard. Here we can say router dot before each. And then we get access to to, from, and next as arguments to an arrow function here. And now we can do some checks here. But first of all, we can get our token from local storage. At the moment, we do not have um, provided functionality for storing this token in our local storage, but we will do this soon. So we have this token here and now we can do some if checks. I just paste them in and then I explain it a bit. So what are we doing here? We are saying if, if the two pass is not guest logged in and it is not guest register, and the user has no token, then it means he is not logged in. And this is why we need to send him to guest login. Yeah. Then also we have another case. And here it is like if the user wants to go to guest login or guest register, but he has a token, yeah? Meaning he's already logged in, then this does not make any sense to let the user go to these pages. So in this case, we send him to just this route, yeah? And this will be our main page, so to speak. So he can do whatever he wants because he's registered and logged in. All right. And now we need to have another case here, else. And here we say simply next. So for the case, he is on any other page and he has a token, then he's totally fine. We do not need to do anything and send him anywhere else. Yeah, this is absolutely fine. And now we are done with this. Let's close it. And now we can start to build out our login and register pages. So let's do it. But before we start to build out our login and register page, let's create another directory in source and name it types. And then in here, let's create a file index.ts. And in here, we will have a few TypeScript interfaces. I will simply paste them in, yeah. And here's not much to say about, but you see we have a user and a chat room and stuff like this. And you can see that a chat room can also contain a user, yeah, another interface 
which refers to this thing here, yeah? And then also a last message can have a user and stuff like this. Why we have all these properties here, you will see in a bit. It's maybe a bit hard to explain. For example, here we have a sender property, which is a user, and we need this in order to display the messages correctly in our chat window, because we want to make sure that the messages of the sender and of the receiver look different, yeah? That they have different background colors and stuff like this. So yeah, that is why we have a sender, but more to that later. And if I was too fast here, just head to my GitHub and copy them because I think the learn effect yeah, of simply writing them down um, is not given in this case. So I think it makes sense um, yeah, to simply copy them. And you also see one more thing here. We have a question mark here and these are just optional parameters. Yes? So a chat room doesn't need to have messages. When we are creating a chat room, it has no messages by default. And this is why we are using this question mark here. And same goes for a message. Yeah, we can send messages without adding an image. So image URL can be undefined as well in this case. All right, let's close this. Now let's implement the user store because we want to have global state in our app. And by having a global state, we make sure that multiple components can access the state and also can modify the state. Yeah, this is really useful so we don't have to pass props from parent components to child components, but all components can access a global store. And yeah, this is really cool. We have just one single source of truth. And I really like it by using Pina. It's very easy to implement and it's just beautiful. I really like it. And yeah, let's start to implement our user store. Let's go to the example store.ts file and let's rename it. Let's say user store.ts. In here, let's create an interface. User state. And this simply has a user property, which is of type user. So we have to import our user interface from types. Now let's rename this to use user store and let's rename counter to user. Now here we have the state and after these parentheses we can just say colon user state. So here we will be returning a user state. Now Let's get rid of these parentheses here. And in here, we want to make sure whenever the user refreshes the page, that there's still a user in our global state if the user has not logged out yet, yeah? So if he just refreshes the page, we want to make sure that the user stays logged in on our front end. And we are doing this by using local storage. User in local storage, we create a new variable. Yeah, we are getting the user from the local storage. And if there is a user in local storage, then we simply return it by using JSON parse. And this way we can hydrate our user in our global store, yeah? And this is important because imagine you refresh the page and you don't get the user from local storage, you immediately will be locked out in our application. And this is bad because we always check the global store if it has a user. And if it has a user, then we know 
um, the user is still locked in, so to speak. Yeah. Here we need to make sure that we return something for the case that this if check is not true. So here we say return and then an object user colon and then curly brackets as user. Yeah. So here in this case we return an empty object. And here we are getting some errors because we need to get rid of these curly brackets, I think. Yep. Now we will be having a bunch of actions. We don't need getters here. Let's get rid of this increment action. Now let's implement async login. And this expects to get a user which is of type user login data. And in user login data, there will be just an email and a password. And now we need to import something. Import API from boot axios. Yeah? And now we need to configure this here. We have this access file under source boot. And you see that we are exporting API here. Yeah. Now we need to change this here. And in here we can say HTTP localhost 8000. API. But that's not enough. We need to do some more customization here. Since we are using Sanctum, we need to make sure that we are always sending a token with each request. Yeah. Otherwise, our backend will not be able to check whether we are authenticated or not. So what we can do here is we say API dot interceptors, request use, then in here we have access to the config as argument in an error function. And now we can get our token from local storage. And then for the case that we have a token, we can add it to the authorization property in the form of a string starting with bearer, empty space, and then our token here, yeah? And after that, we have to return something from this error function. We have to return config, yeah? which now contains our token. And by doing so, we should be able to use Axios now. Let's go back to our user store. And in here we say return api.post and as route login and we add the user as data. Now let's say dot then. Here we get access to the response which is of type axios response and then we can further specify it by using this angle brackets and then curly brackets and here we say user colon user and then comma token string like this. Now we have to provide an arrow here, curly brackets. And here we get back from our API, the user API, which is equal to response data user. Also we get back our token and then we can store the user as well as the token in our local storage by using the local storage API, which comes with every modern web browser. And then also let's say this.user is equal to user API. And I have to import access response. Now for the case that this didn't work, we want to be able to catch the error 
by using this catch method. And here we say throw error. Throw error. And here's an error. Let's get rid of this parentheses like this. And we need to put it here. Yeah, this should be fine. And by doing this, we will be able to catch the error in our login page and display it. Yeah, by using this catch method here and then throw error. And now let's implement the register action. And it's pretty much the same. So let me copy it and paste it in. Yeah. But instead of using user login data, we are using user register data. We need to import it. And then instead of hitting the login route, we are hitting register. Yeah. And then what we are doing here is basically the same as above. Next, let's implement logout async logout. And here let's say return api.post. We hit the logout route. And then in here, in this then block, we remove the user and the token from our local storage. And we set the user in our global store to an empty object. And by doing so, we will be locked out. And here I have to close this. And then I can say catch again and throw error like this. Let's also have a few other actions. Async search user or users, I should say which expects a query, which is a string. And yeah, this is pretty easy. I will just paste it in. Yeah, we are hitting search users. We are performing a get request. We are sending the query in here as parents. And then we are returning the users that we found. Then let's have another action, update user, which simply updates the user in the local storage and in our store here. Yeah? This is all what this action does. And then also we have another action for updating the username. And it simply hits another endpoint and it uses a put method in this case because it's updating something and then we use update user in here yeah, to update our user in our global store. And with that we are done with the implementation of the user store. We can close this file and we can start to work on our register page. So let's head to our register page. Let's get rid of this text here. Now let's create a script section here. Script setup. Lang is TypeScript. Let's close it. And in here we need to import a bunch of stuff. First of all, we import qform as type and use quasar as hook. We import use user store, yeah, which is this thing here. We make use of ref from view. This is for reactivity. So we have reactive variables, so to speak. And we use the router. Now let's create a router by using use router. 
And let's create a, a ref, which we name form. And this form contains email, name and password as properties, which are all strings. Also, let's create a variable $q, which is created by using the use quasar hook. Also, let's create a form ref. And this is of type Q form or null. Yeah. And why this is of Q and why this is of type Q form is because we are simply using the form component from, from Quasar. And so we can use this type here. Yeah. This is important. And now let's implement a function submit form which is async. And in here, let's say form ref dot value dot validate. And then let's say then in here we have a async function. And then in here, Let's say try and catch. Now in this try block, we can say await use user store register and we pass in form value, which is this object here. Yeah. And then if this was successful, we can say dollar sign Q dot notify. And we can display a nice toaster message of register success. But very important for this to work, we need to go to the quasar.config.js file here. And we have to look for plugins, which is here. And here we have to add a string to this array, notify. And then also after this notify, let's say router push to slash yeah so we are basically logged in and we are ready to use our app for the case that there was an error we can say dollar sign q dot notify and we simply display the error which will be something like um, password was not correct or or so to speak yeah and we have to make this type of any here. All right. Now I would say we can start implementing the template here. Yeah. But first of all, let's start our Quasar app here. Yeah. That we see something. npm run dev. And we have to say minus minus watch to have hot reloading. So we see the changes immediately. And here we are having our Quasar app. Now you see we have this hash here, which sucks. So let's go to our Quasar config again. Let's search for history. Let's grab history and replace hash with it like this. Yeah. And now you are seeing that we are on the main page here, <laughs> which um, is not correct. Yeah, because we have a guard here, a road guard, and we should not be able to go there. And the reason being, I still have a token and a user here because previously I forgot to log out. Yeah, when using um, the test front end yeah, that I have developed previously. Um, so let's get rid of them. And now let's see what happens. Yeah, we get redirected to guest login, which is correct. But we should also be able to go to register. And here we get an error. Why is that? I think it is because here we need to say register. And then, yeah, this works. Now let's code out the template and make it look pretty. 
here let's say q page and then let's add padding let's give it a class of register page which we'll be creating in a bit and then in q page let's have a diff with a class of row justify center items center yeah these classes come with quasar and let's also add an inline style and let's say height 100 vh let's close it and in this diff here let's have a q card with a class of my card and then a style with min width of 400 pixel let's close this tag and now in this q card let's have a q card section for some nice padding and stuff let's say class is text center and all these css classes come with quasar you can go to the quasar docs and see what they mean and stuff like this but yeah this is pretty much self-explanatory here so yeah let's keep going in this QCut section let's have a diff with a class of text h4 q margin on the y-axis md and in this diff let's say register like this then below this diff let's have another diff with a class of text subtitle 2 and in here let's say join our amazing app and maybe we can get rid of this margin here to make them closer together i think this looks better now after this closing cue card section tag let's make a queue separator And then below the separator, let's have another Q card section. And in here, let's say Q form. Add submit. We want to fire our submit form function. And let's give it a ref of form ref. Now in this Q form, Let's have a Q input. Q input outlined V model is equal to form.email. Label is email. We apply lazy roots. So once this input loses focus, the validation will kick in. And now let's provide some roots, colon roots. And this will be an array and I simply paste it in. Oops. Like this, yeah. So we are checking whether val is empty or not. If it's empty, we say please enter email. And then also we are checking um, if it's a valid email yeah, by using this regular expression. There are also other methods how we can test this. Yeah, We can also make it a type of email, I think then we would have the inbuilt um, browser validation but yeah this sucks a bit and doesn't look really nice this looks better i think and you will see this in action in a bit 
Now below this email input, let's have another input for the name. Yeah, here again we use rules yeah, and we check whether a name was um, provided. Otherwise we show this error message. And then also we do the same for the password down below. Yeah? And now I wonder why this is not refreshing. Ah, yeah. Strange. It should be refreshing automatically since, since we are using um, dash dash watch as flag, but hmm, I don't know. Yeah, this looks nice. And now you see we have lazy roots applied, nothing happens. But if this input loses focus, yeah, the validation kicks in. And same here. All right. Now after this Q input here, let's have card actions here. And what this is, we have a router link to guest login for the case that we already have an account. Yeah, so we go to login. And then also we have a button for registering. And here you see that we don't have an on-click handler on this button. And this is because we don't need it here since we made the button type of submit here. And we are using the submit event handler here. Yeah. So this is why we don't need to specify on-click here on the button. But here we want to make sure that the button is disabled if the validation was not successful. Yeah? In this case here, the validation was not successful. And for this case, the button will not work. Yeah? Let's go to the network tab. And you can see if I hit register, no request is made. Yeah? Super cool. And if we provide a valid email and a name, and a password, a request is made, yeah? And we are also logged in. You see we have a token and a user in local storage. All right, so far so good. Now let's get rid of the user and the token in local storage. Let hit, let's hit refresh and we are back to the login page. And by the way, we have disabled the button here for the case that the validation has not been successful. And then also here in the submit form, we make sure that we only um, make a request to the register route once um, yeah, the form data has been validated here. So we have some kind of duplication happening here. We could basically also get rid of this and it should still work. Let's see it. Yeah, you see nothing happens here. And yeah. Also, um, let's create another user. In our database, you will see that we have these access tokens here now. Yeah. And they will stay in here as long as we are not locked out. And we are only locked out when hitting the lockout route. And we will implementing this soon. And we should also see two new users here yeah, that we have registered. Let's delete the user and the token from local storage again. And let's implement the login page. Here we can do basically the same. Let's copy all the code from the register page. And let's paste it in our login page. Let's change the text here to login. And let's say sign in. Sign in to enjoy our amazing app. Then 
here let's say no account yet then let's send him to register and we need to make sure that we are using the login action here and also we need to change this for the case that we are logging in we don't need to provide a name and we need to get rid of this name input here and by doing so we should be fine yeah this is what it looks like and here we need to make sure that this is written correctly register and I think this looks fine let's try to log in um, I grab this yeah the email and name are the same so I grab this name and I paste it in here and let's also paste the password in which is the same as the email I think let's hit register oh, we get invalid credentials was the password one two three yep yeah this is correct and here you see we still need to do some work this must be log in the label of the button and then also in here we have to say log in successful or something like this yeah and now we are done with full stack authentication yeah we did the authentication on the back end and on the front end and now we can start to build a nice navigation because at the moment we just have this so let's work on this next now let's head to our main layout file let's get rid of everything in the template and let's also get rid of everything in the script setup section first of all let's import a few things in here we need store to refs from pioneer this is very important so when we access the global store the global pioneer store we want to make sure that the variables stay reactive meaning whenever the global state changes we want our component to re-render this is very important and we can only keep the reactivity alive when using store to refs in this case yeah there are also other opportunities i think you could do it with with um, computed properties but this is very easy to use and you will see it in action soon also we need our user store so let's import use user store we need to make use of computed use router and then also let's go to source and create a new folder help us in there let's create a file index.ts and in here we will have a simple function that we will be exporting and this function takes a url pass and then adds it to the base url and here we make use of environment variables and here it is important to always add view underscore app to every environment variable otherwise it will not work and yeah this is basically a little helper function for building a url and why this is great is otherwise we would need to hard code the base url every time yeah we need it in our template and this is really bad and by doing this here we only need to change the um, base url in our env file yeah, this is much better but in order to be able to use environment variables like this we have to make sure that we install env 
And then also you need to go to your Quasar config file. And then you need to look for env. Yeah, which is here. Uncomment it. And then get rid of these curly brackets. Then you need to say require dot env config passed. And by doing so, you will be able to use environment variables in your project, yeah? And now you can go to your .env file, but at the moment we don't have it, so let's create it, .env. And in here we write view app base URL and then this thing here, yeah? And what we also could do is we could copy this and let's say API URL and we make it like this, yeah? And now we can take this view app API URL and go to Axios and now you see we have this hard-coded string here. We can say process.env and then dot view app API URL. And you might be wondering why we have these two URLs. Yeah, basically one will be used for, for our API routes and the other one will be used for accessing um, images. Yeah, and you will see this in action soon. All right. Now let's keep working on our main layout. Let's create a router by using use router. Then let's also create a function, handle action. And what this function will be doing is, it will be logging out the user if the user is logged in. And for the case the user is not logged in, it will send him to the login page, yeah? And for this to work, let's create a computed property, username, and this returns the username of the logged in user in this case, yeah? And we do not have the user at the moment, so what we can do here is we can say const curly brackets user and then store to refs use user store, yeah? And by doing so, we get a user which is a ref and this is important because because now it's reactive and whenever the user changes in our pioneer store it changes in our component or in or in our page and it forces the component to re-render this is important yeah if we didn't do it with store to refs we simply would get an object here with no reactivity, yeah? And also here we need to make use of computed because otherwise we lose the reactivity as well, yeah? Because then it is just a string. All right. Now let's go back to our handle action. For the case that the username is not undefined, then we want to log out the user, yeah, and then push him to the logout page. Otherwise, we just want to push him to the login page, yeah. And here we need to make sure that handle action is an async function. Now let's create an array down below named links. And for now, this array just has one object, yeah, but um, you can easily extend it. And for now, we are good in here. Let's go to our template and start making it look pretty. So in here, we make use of queue layout, yeah, quasar component. And then let's say diff. Class layout view, and then in here, let's say diff class sidebar call justify between, 
items between and shadow two. Then let's also add to this div tag a v show dollar sign q dot screen greater than small. Yeah. We only want to show it if we are on larger devices. And then let's also add inline styling, style, height 100% and max width of 200 pixel. Then in this diff here, let's add another diff with inline style of height of 80%. And then in here, let's have Q tabs. Let's make them vertical, dense, active color, we can set to primary. Indicator color, we can set also to primary. And let's give it some margin at the top, Q margin top large. Let's close Q tabs here and in between let's say Q route tab V4 link in links. Key is a link title for example two is equal to link dot link and always make sure to have a colon here because it's dynamic data here label is link dot title and icon link link dot icon And now I need to make sure that I get rid of one diff. Yeah, that was incorrectly placed there. All right. And now I need to make sure to get rid of one diff because there's one too much. And let's see what's happening here. We don't see anything. Let's make the screen larger. And now we see a nice tab here. Yeah. All right. And here we are using a route tab because we are going to a specific route. Below, we will have another tab but not a route tab, yeah? Because here we are having a on-click handler and we are not going to any route here, yeah? And here you see we are using username to decide whether to display logout or login. And also um, we, we use it to decide whether to display um, the logout or login icon, yeah? And this only works if username is a computed property. Yeah? Otherwise, if it is just a simple string, you can't do it like this. Now, after this closing Q tabs and diff tag, let's have another diff. Let's say a line is center, 
class is cursor pointer. And let's also say it has an on-click handler, but at the moment we don't do anything important in here, yeah. Um, and then in the stiff here, let's have Q avatar. Q avatar class. Q margin all MD and then in this avatar let's have a Q icon with a VF directive and let's say if no user dot avatar ul then we want to display this icon with the name of person. Let's close it. For the case that we have a user avatar URL, we can simply display a Q image, yeah? And let's see how it looks. There it is. All right. Now, after this closing Q avatar tag and two other closing diffs, Let's implement navigation for mobile. Let's have a Q footer. We show and here we say Q dollar screen lower than MD. Yeah, then we want to show it and here we provide fixed bottom as class and let's make it elevated to look great. And in here we have the same as above so let's copy this Q tabs but now I would say after Q route tab let's make another tab Class is cursor pointer and in here we do the same as above but you see we have this URL helper that we have coded previously so let's import it. All right I don't I have to do it manually. Import URL from source helpers and you see here I made a mistake I also need to do it like this so that the base URL gets prepended yeah to build a complete URL and now of course for our footer we don't need this vertical prop here yeah so let's make it like this also here's a mistake, color, and now let's go to Qtabs in our navigation for mobile. And now let's add some classes in here. Let's say BG gray one, yeah, and text gray eight, like this. And let's also and let's also make sure that elevated is written correctly. So we get a nice shadow here. And now we have this blue line here and I think it is because I'm using this margin here. Yeah. Now it looks nice, I think. Maybe we could also make it a little bit grayer. Yeah, maybe something like this. And I think this looks pretty nice. 
Also, make sure to write it correctly here. Indicator color. And now let's add a few other CSS classes here. Style, scoped. So it's only for this main layout page here. And in here, let's create a class layout view. Let's say display flex and height 100 bh. And by doing this, we have something like this. Yeah. Now let's give the sidebar a width of 200 pixel maybe. Let's make the avatars round. And you will see how it looks later. Um, and in order for the main layout page to be able to display content, we actually need to add something in the template down below our footer here. Yeah, we need to add router view. And it's always best practice when using Quasar that we wrap it in a queue page container. Yeah, and by doing so, we will be able to render, we will be able to render the room list in our main layout. Yeah. This is what we are doing when adding this here, router view. All right. Now let's add a few other classes. Let's say the main content should be flex grow one. And let's have a fixed bottom class. So this thing here is fixed when scrolling. Yeah, so, so it stays there at this position. And we are good guys, I think. We are pretty much good. And now I want to show you something. Look, we have dark mode inbuilt by Quasar. Yeah, super easy to implement. I just want to show it to you. Um, we will not make use of it, but yeah, just as a placeholder action here, a placeholder on click, I wanted to show you. And now you also understand why we have two different layouts, right? Look, we are locked in now, yeah? And because we are locked in, we will be having access to the chat rooms and we will be able to use the app. But now when logging out, which we haven't implemented yet. All right, now let's try to log out. And this is not working. Okay, here I just made a mistake. On click is wrong here. It must be at click, yeah. <laughs> and down below the same, at click. Now let's try to log out. This should work now. All right, not found. We are making a pause request to log out. Are we doing the same here? Yeah, we should make the same here, right? It's not found. Ah, you see, we are making the request to the wrong base URL. So why is that? Let's check it out. Let's go to our user store. And in here you see that somehow the environment variable in here does not work. Why is that? View API URL. Um, what we can do is maybe we should restart it and let's see if this helps. And now it's working, yeah? We are correctly locked out. Our user and token are gone. Perfect.
Beautiful. Now let's log in again. Next, we can start implementing our room list. And by implementing our room list, we will have functionality such as being able to create rooms, to update rooms, and also to add users to a room, of course, and then also to delete rooms. So let's get started with our room list. All right, let's start with our room list feature. And in order to do so, let's start with the backend implementation. On our backend, let's make a new controller. PHP artisan make controller chat a room controller. Let's also make a chat room model. Make model chat room and also a migration minus M. And then let's also make a resource chat room resource. And with that, we can go to the chat room controller. And in here, let's create a method, public function store chat room, which takes a request, request. And again, here you could use custom made requests, but I leave it like this for now because we don't have much validation to do here. So, and here we say validated is equal to request validate. And here we are expecting just a room name, yeah, which should be unique. Yeah. So there should be no other room name in the chat rooms table under the name column. Yeah. And also it should be no longer than 255 characters and so on. And it is required. Then let's say chat room or we are grabbing our authenticated user. And now here we can make use of our relationships, but at the moment we don't have any relationships. So let's go to the user model. And here we need to add a few relationships. The first being named chat rooms. Yeah? A user can belong to many chat rooms. Yeah? A user can be in many different chat rooms. A user can have many messages. And then we have another custom made method here is in room which returns a boolean and we use it to check whether the authenticated user is associated with a chat room with the ID of chat room ID. Yeah? And why we use this method, you will see in a bit. All right, let's go back to our chat room controller. And in here we can say now user and then chat rooms. And then we can say create. Then we provide an array. And then here we say name, which is the column name. And then validated room name. Semicolon. And then here we can return response JSON. Yeah, we can simply return the chat room. And as code, we can provide 201 because we created a new chat room. Now, one important thing here. We need a pivot table because this is a many-to-many -many relationship. Yeah? A chat room belongs to many users and a user belongs to many chat rooms. Because this is the case, 
we need a pivot table. So for that, let's create a migration, make migration, and we name it create chat room user table. Yeah. And why do we name it like this? This is basically best practice. Yeah. We name it in singular and then also in alphabetical order. Yeah. This is what we are doing here. And now let's go to our migration that we have just created. And in here we need to add two other columns. Chat room ID and user ID. And by doing so we will be able to handle many to many relationships. All right. Now let's go back to our chat room controller and this should work now and by the way here we get an error but this is just my IDE or some extension I've installed for Visual Studio Code. All right let's keep going. Now we want to add another method add users to chat room. So we want to be able to associate multiple users to a chat room. Request request and then we can inject the chat room model. Now in here we expect two fields from the front end user IDs which should be required and an array and then here user IDs dot star and here we want to check whether the user ID exists in the user's table. Yeah, this is very important. And then also maybe we can say it should be required and it should be an integer like this. Yeah. And now what are we doing here? Yeah, that's a big question. So let me explain to you when we initially create a new room. We associate the authenticated user with it. Yeah. So the authenticated user is already associated with the chat room. Now for the case that we add other users to the chat room, we don't want to get rid of the first user that had been added, right? And this is why we use without detaching so we keep this user ID, yeah, but we add all other users, yeah. This is what we are doing here with this sync without detaching. And then in here we can return the chat room, but then also we load the relationship users, yeah. So the chat room is populated with users. And then we can say 201 again. Now let's make sure that we import the chat room, yeah, which is our model. Down below, let's say public function delete chat room. Here again, we can inject our model and then we simply can say chat room delete. And we are already done with this. Next, we can implement another function get chat rooms. And here let's say chat rooms is equal to auth user chat rooms with and here we provide an array. We want last message and users. Yeah, so we populate each chat room with a last message and users property, so to speak. And we have to say get to actually get the chat rooms. So what are we doing here? So we are basically getting all the chat rooms that are associated with the authenticated user. That's what we are doing here. And now let's see, do we have this last message? relationship. Do we have this? 
No, we don't have it. All right. Yeah, we need to implement this in our chat room model. Here we also need to have a chat room can have many messages, but it also can have a last message. Yeah? And this is just one message. Yeah? And this is basically the latest one that has been associated with the chat room. And now one thing, here we do not want just to return chat rooms, which is a Laravel collection, but we want to return a chat room resource, chat room resource, colon, colon, collection, chat rooms. Yeah. Now let's go to this chat room resource and in here let's modify this return statement. Here we want to return the ID name, users, last message, messages and so on. And here we want to make sure that we are using the message resource. Yeah. And then you see when loaded here and this basically says whenever we make use of this here with or something like, where is it? Load, yeah? Then this here will be done, yeah? Then this will be populated. Now let's make the message resource. Make resource, message resource. And in here, let's return ID, content, sender, image URL, and so on. Yep. And we are done with our get chat rooms method. Now we want to be able to get a chat room by ID. Yeah, this is not much different. But here we are injecting our chat room model and we can simply load messages and users. So chatroom has a field with messages and users. And here again, we make use of the chatroom resource, but since this is not a collection or an array, we don't have to use this collection uh, method. And last but not least, public function update chat room request request chat room chat room in here we have validated is equal to request validate and then we expect the room name from the front end and then the user IDs. And in this case, we need to append chat room ID. And why do we have to do it? Yeah, that's a big question. And the reason being, imagine we want to keep the same um, room name. Yeah. And now we have this rule here, chat rooms, comma, name and this must be unique and by adding this we allow that there's already a chat room with the same name yeah this is why we have to add it and by doing so we allow that there's exactly one chat room already with the same name and it's no problem to update it yeah all right now what we can do is we can add to our user ID's key, yeah, which is an array, we can add the authenticated user's ID. And after this, we can use the sync method to associate all the users here, yeah, with the chat room. Then we can explicitly update the name of the chat room, yeah, the column. Name is just name, and the field from the front end is room name. Then we can make use of eager loading, load all the users on the chat room, 
and then return the resource here, yeah, the chat room resource. And now we are done with the chat room controller. Now let's go to the API routes. And in here we need to implement ton of routes. First of all, we have a route for getting all the chat rooms. Then we can get a chat room by ID. We can create a chat room. We can add users to a chat room. We can update a chat room. We can delete a chat room. And that should be it, I think. Let's make sure to import the chat room controller. And let's say PHP artisan optimize. And we need to run PHP artisan migrate because we created this migration here, yeah, the pivot table for the many to many relationship. With this in place, we can start working on the front end. All right, and for some reason, the routing was not working and um, I didn't find any mistakes by me. So I restarted the app and now everything works. And now when going to rooms, we see our room list here, but we should also see this component here, choose a room because this component gets rendered whenever we are on the rooms route, yeah? Because then this also this component gets rendered, but it is not being rendered. And the reason being is we need to go to our room list. And in here, we need to say router view And this should fix it, yeah? Now we see it here. And before I've added it here, but I think we don't need that. Yep. And we should be fine now, all right. Let's start creating our room list feature. For that, let's create a script section. Setup lang is equal to TypeScript. And in here, we will be using a bunch of stuff. Store to refs. Then also use the room store. We need to create it. Then the chat room interface. Computed, unmounted and ref from view. And Use router, then also use Quasar, and we should be good for now. Now let's create a room store, room minus store.ts. In here, let's create a room state. Yeah, and here we have rooms which is an array of chat room and then also a single room, which is just a chat room. And then also we have two booleans here for toggling some dialogues, which we will see in a bit. Now let's create our store. Export const use room store is equal to define store from Pioneer. And then in here, let's call it a room, comma, curly brackets. In here, let's have a state property, which returns a room state. And let's get rid of these parentheses here. And in here, let's say return. We return rooms as an empty array. Room null 
shall update room dialog faults and shall add room dialog faults. And now I need to make sure to put a parenthesis here like this. After this state, we need to have some actions and then I need to make sure to close this properly. The first action is toggle show at room dialog, which basically takes whatever this value is currently, true or false, and then turns it into the opposite, yeah, and reassigns it to this, yeah. This is what this does. And next, let's create another action async create room which simply takes a room name of type string and in here let's do a try catch catch gets error as argument we can throw that error then here in the try block, let's say const response, which is of type axios response. And then angle brackets, curly brackets, we expect a chat room property, which is of type chat room, like this. equal and now we say await api dot post to chat rooms and then comma on the back end we expect a field named room name and then we say colon room name, which is our argument. <clears throat> we need to import API. And then down below this await line here, let's say this rooms, and we push our chat room into this global room state. And then also we can return response data. I think we might need this. And we need to import the chat room interface. Next we have get rooms, which is a very simple action. Yeah, we are getting the rooms via get request and then we assign it to our room state here. And here let's say again axios response angle brackets inside curly brackets and then we can say chat rooms colon chat room and then array brackets here, yeah? Now let's implement async get messages of the room. And here we need the room ID, which is of type number. And here one important thing is, yeah, because we want to create an efficient app, when we are getting a list of rooms, we don't need to get all the messages associated with each room, yeah? Because this takes a lot of time and this is very expensive to fetch all the messages. And because when we are displaying just a list of different rooms, we don't need the messages, yeah? We just need the last message and this is what we will be showing in the room list. And yeah, you will see how this works. But here, when we are displaying a single room, yeah, then of course we want to show all the messages. Yeah? 
And for this case, we will fetch all the messages. Try catch throw error. Here we make a get request to chat rooms. And then here we provide the room ID for getting a specific chat room. Then below this await line, let's get the chat room index from the rooms array. And then what we can do is this rooms at the specific chat room index. Yeah. So here we are accessing a specific room and then we want to add the messages that we get back from our API to this messages array. This is what we are doing here. Let's also create another action async send message which expects message data which is of type form data and then also a room number which is of type ID. And the reason we are expecting form data here is because when sending a message we want to have the ability to also send an image. Yeah, not only a message body, but also an image. And for that, we need form data. Try catch. And here we make a post request. To chat rooms, a room ID, messages yeah, with the message data. Now let's get the chat room index of the specific room with the ID of room ID in rooms. And of course, this must be room ID. And now let's say this dot rooms at chat room index and then last message and we set the last message to response data message and then for the case that we have a specific room with messages then we want to push this message to the messages array. And here we must say question mark like this. So what are we doing here? First of all, we want to display all the available rooms. And for this case, we only want to show the last message. Yeah. So there's no need to populate the messages array, yeah, because we don't need it here. We only want to populate the messages array when we are at a specific room, for example, three and then messages. Yeah, then we would be on a specific room and we would have our chat window here and then we want to have the messages. And every time we send a message, we want to take that message that we get back from the API and push it into this messages array of this single room. Now let's also have async delete room, which takes a room ID. And then again, try catch error, throw error, and in here, await API delete chat rooms, and then we specify the room ID. Then again, we want to have the index of the room in the rooms array with this specific room ID, yeah. And then we can perform splice 
and cut out one element at this specific index. Then also let's have async update room, which takes a room of type chat room. And now remember what we've done on the back end. On the back end, we expect an array named user IDs, yeah, or I should say a field named user IDs, which is an array. And in order to get the user IDs, we need to map over this user's array on the room. And then we need to return user.id. Yeah? So we are creating a new array only containing the user IDs and we assign it to user IDs. Yeah? Then also we expect a field on the back end named room name. And then we can do our put request yeah, to update a specific room. And in here we provide the user IDs and the room name. Yeah? And because we are passing a room ID like this, on the back end we can use model injection to get directly access to this specific chat room model. Yeah? And again, let's get the index of the room in the room's state with this specific ID. Yeah? And then let's say this rooms at this specific index, let's set it to response data chat room. Chat room. And by doing this, we have updated this specific room in our global state. Next, let's add a sync, add users to room. We expect a room ID of type number, user IDs of type number array. And then again, try catch. Here we make a post request to chat rooms, room ID users. And by doing so, we will be able to add users to a specific chat room. After that, again, we get the index of the room with the ID of room ID in the room's state so that we can access the specific room and here the users property and then we set it to our response from our API, yeah? which contains all the newly added users to this room. Then also we will have another action, toggle room update dialog, again very simple, not much to explain here. Then let's also have async, fetch room by ID, it expects a room ID of type number, try and catch. Here we make a get request to chat rooms room ID. And let's also say const response is equal to, uh, like this. And then we update this room here, yeah, this property here in our state with this specific chat room. And we should be good here. Now let's have another action, async, add message, message of type message. And in here we only want to update the state of our store. So here we say if this room question mark messages. So if we have a room with a messages array, then we want to push the message to it. 
Then also we want to get the index of the room with this room ID in the rooms array. And then we want to update its last message. Yeah? And by doing so, yeah, whenever we send a message in our chat window, we see it appear in our chat window, but also we will see that the last message in our room list here um, changes as well and updates. Yeah? All righty. And I think we are fine here. We might have forgotten one, one or two actions, but we will add them later yeah, for the case that we need them. Now let's close this room store, choose room, um, choose room. We don't need, but I just see I made a mistake here. All these things need to be imported into our room list. Yeah, <laughs> sorry for that. Script setup lang ts. We need them here. And choose room is a very simple component where we do not need a script tag. Yeah. All right. Chat window we can close as well. Main layout too. Now let's access the rooms from our global store yeah, by using store to rest and our room store. Then also we need to calculate the avatar container width dynamically yeah, by using this function here. And dependent on the length of the user's array, yeah, we calculate the container width Next, we need a room to update ID. Yeah, we need the ID of the room that we want to update. And here we need to use a ref for this. Then also, we need a function format time, which takes a date, which is just a string. And then we create a new date object. Then we build a nice string, so to speak. Yeah, and here I use de minus de because I'm in Germany. Yeah, feel free to use any other code here, and you will see how this looks in a bit. Let's also create dollar sign q variable by using use quasar. Also. Let's create another function, scroll area style, which uses computed here. Yeah. And here we create the height of the scroll area of the room list. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, independency of the screen width. Yeah. Then also we have a simple go to room function, which takes a room ID and then pushes the user to a specific room. And we need to create a router for this. Const router is equal to use router. Next, we use on mounted. And whenever this room list component mounts, then we want to fetch all rooms. And because we are accessing this rooms ref here, yeah, from the state, it is directly populated, yeah. Because um, when going to our room store again and searching for get rooms, yeah. We are getting back the response from our API and then we assign it to rooms. And by doing this, the rooms will be updated and the component will be re-rendered, so to speak. Yeah. All right. Next, we have another function, toggle room update dialog. Yeah. Here we use this function to show a dialog to update our room. Yeah? For example, we can change the name of our room or add 
add users to our room or even get rid of users in our room. And here we assign the room ID to this room to update ID ref. And then we toggle our dialog by using this toggle room update dialog action in our room store. Then also we have another simple function for deleting a room yeah, where we call use room store delete room and we provide the room ID. And now we are pretty much done with the script section of our room list. So we can start to implement the template. So, so let's start with the diff, with a class of row. In this diff, we have another diff with class of chat room list call, uh, call xs12. and then call md4 and this should be good I think like this. In here let's have another diff with a class of header text h4 text gray 9 q margin y md and then QMXMD. <coughs> let's close this diff. And then in this diff here, let's have a text of chat rooms. And here I see I get an error in our room store. What went wrong here? Of course, one bracket is missing here. Refresh. Oh, API is not correctly imported. Boot. Axios. And here's a plus sign. And now we are good. Okay. All right. Now below this diff with the chat rooms text, let's have a Q button with dance property for let class Q M Y S M Q M X M D just for some margin on the X and Y axis. Let's have color primary, label at chat room, and click use room store, and then how did we name it? Toggle show at room, I think, right? And then in this button here, let's have a Q icon with name of add. And let's close this icon. And here we have our beautiful add chat room button. Now after this closing Q button tag and this closing diff, Let's have our Q scroll area with a dynamic style of scroll area style. In here, let's have a Q list with some padding. And I think this padding prop is responsive. Yeah, so based on the width and height and stuff like this, this is pretty cool. And then we can say Q item v4 chat room in rooms 
let's make it lowercase chat room in rooms yeah let's make the queue item clickable let's give it a class of chat room item and then q m y large then what went wrong here all right i think we need a key chat room dot id yeah and now for each q item we will render a beautiful menu yeah q menu with some pretty cool flip animation you will see this in a bit and this me menu consists of three q items yeah and they are all clickable and they use the functions that we provided in our script section yeah now below this closing q menu here let's have another diff with dynamic style and here we say curly brackets width colon avatar container width we pass in the chat room and we say plus pixel as string then also position relative and height 100 percent height 100 percent like this also let's give it a class of flex center row q m y large so flex direction is row and then flex center to align it vertically and horizontally basically i think that's what it does yeah now for each q item here yeah what we want to display is an avatar group yeah because a chat room can have multiple users yeah or multiple participants and for each of the participants we want to render the corresponding avatar so here we say q avatar v4 directive then in here parentheses user comma index in chat room users like this and then let's also have a key user.id a source user.avatar url and here it's important to use our url helper like this and we need to import it from source helpers let's give the avatar a size of 50 pixel let's give it some style let's say back ticks a left colon oops in the back ticks we say left colon and then we say dollar sign curly brackets index times 25 and then after the closing curly bracket we say px like this let's also say color is equal to primary text color is white and then also let's give it some classes q margin right sm and overlapping which we have to create 
And then in this avatar here, for the case that we have an avatar image already because the user has updated his profile, then we can display a Q avatar image. Yeah, with a class of round avatar, which we have to be creating soon. And also here, yeah, you see it's still hard coded, which is bad. We don't want to hard code any URLs in our template. So here we do URL and then we pass in user.avatar URL. And for the case that we don't have a user.avatar URL, we simply render an icon with a person. All right, and now I would say, before we keep going here, I basically want to render some chat rooms here, yeah? So we see what we are doing. And for that, we need to add another component. And this will be the component add chat room dialog.view. And let's implement this component now. This is a big one. First of all, let's have a template. Then below, let's have our script. Let's close the script. In here, we need to import a bunch of stuff. Yeah, a ref, use user store, chat room and user from our types file, use room store and use quasar. Then let's create a few variables. Dollar sign Q by using use quasar. Let's create a users ref, yeah, which is of type user array. Also, let's create another array, selected users, which is also a ref. Let's create another ref named step, which is just a ref, which is initially step one. Let's create two other refs, which are of type boolean. Step one done and step two done. They are initially false. Let's create a room name, which is also a ref. Initially, it's empty. Then also, let's create another ref, newly created room, which is of type chat room or null. And initially, it's null. And then, since we are using a very nice select component of Quasar, we need to create a filter function for it. And this is what we are doing now. Filter fn is equal to a function. And this function expects a few arguments. Val, which is of type string. Then update, which is a function which returns nothing. But this function expects a callback, which is also a function which does not return anything. <laughs> it's a little bit um, confusing here, but it's also not so important to explain here what's happening here. And then also we have a board here, which is a function which does not return anything as well. Yeah, And then the filter function does not return anything as well. So also return type is void, so to speak. And now in here, we can run our update function. And update expects another function. Yeah. All right. And in here, we can do a bunch of stuff. For example, we could say, if we have just typed less than three characters in the search input, what we want to do then is abort. That's it. We don't want to do anything. And then return. Yeah. Otherwise, we want to search users. Yeah. We want to make an API request 
use our user store and search users. Yeah? And by doing something like this, we, we avoid unnecessary requests to our backend. Yeah? You could also do other things here as well, yeah? but maybe we leave it like this. Um, and here we use our user store and in here we have search users, yeah, which is this thing here, which returns all the users of our app, yeah, all the users that have registered. Now, below this function, let's create another function, const create create rule is equal to async arrow function in here try and catch and in the try block let's call create room yeah in our room store create room and here you see we also return response.data and by doing so we can assign the result of this to the response in here yeah and then we can say newly created room dot value because it's a ref we need to say dot value and we can we can assign response dot chat room to it yeah now that we have created a chat room we can say step one is done because we will be implementing a beautiful stepper you will see that in action and it has two steps and once we've created a room step one is done yeah and we can set step to step two yeah now the next step is step two so to speak after that we can say q.notify room created yeah for the case that it went wrong we can display the error message and here we have to say any now let's create another function add users which is equal to an async error function in here again try catch and here we call add users to room in our room store <clears throat> and we provide the room id and then also an array of user IDs, which is of type number array. Yeah, and we can do that by um, running the map method on the selected users and then just return the user ID. Yeah, so this thing here will create a new array which just contains the user IDs. After that, let's create a Boolean is multiple users. And for the case that we have more than one selected user, this is true. And then again, we can say q.notify and based on the number of selected users, we can say users added to room or just user added to room. After that, we can set selected users to an empty array again, newly created room can set as well to null and then also step one and step two we can set to false again step we can set to step one again room name we can set to an empty string and we can hide our add room um, dialog all right <laughs> and I am super sorry let's take all this code and let's put it in the try block, of course, yeah? Sorry for that. And then here for the case that we got an error, let's simply display the error message and let's also hide the dialog after that. Now let's go to our template. Let's say QDialog vModel is equal to use room store which is a function and then show dot show add room dialog which is a boolean yeah and based on this boolean we show the dialog or we hide it all right 
Then in this dialog, let's have a cue card with style is equal to min width of 400 pixel. In this card, let's have a cue card section. And in here, let's have a cue card stepper. Stepper with a V model of step color primary and done color once a step is completed done color green and let's add some other props to the stepper active color red inactive color gray six and let's yeah i think that's fine now in here we will have two steps q step let's name it step one Title is create a room. Icon is add. V model done. V model done is our step one done. And by default, it should be opened. Set it to true. Let's make a closing Q step tag. Now in here, let's have a Q input with V model of room name, a label of room name, and a class of Q, M, Y, M, D. Down below, let's have a Q button, which is disabled for the case that room name dot length is lower than one. Yeah. Color is primary. label is create room and on click is create room yeah and it can be self closing and we are done with our first step now let's create our second step q step and it's disabled for the case that step one is not done. Yeah, step one done. Name is step two. Title is add users. The model done is equal to step two done. And default opened default opened open it is equal to false yeah now in the step here let's have a queue select let's say use input multiply we want to be able to choose multiply um, results, so to speak, yeah, multiply options. Use chips. You will see what this does in a moment. V model is selected users. Yeah, we want to display all the selected users. And our options are all the users like this. 
option label will be name, yeah, the name of the user, and then the option value will be the ID of the user. And then also at filter, we will be calling our filter function, yeah, like this. And let's also give it a class of Q, M, Y, M, D. And then let's close it. And in this Q select, let's have a template V slot option is equal to scope. And now let's customize this um, Q select a bit. Here we say Q item V bind scope dot item props. Now we can fully customize this. Let's say Q item section. This should be shown at the side. Then we say in here we want to have a Q avatar and this shall show an image for the case that we have an image, yeah, an avatar URL, so to speak. And we need to import our URL helper. And if we don't have an avatar URL, then we simply show Q icon yeah, with the name of person and important here to have the V else directive. Let's close the avatar. Then below this avatar, let's have another Q item section. In here, let's have a Q item label. And then we display scope opt name. And then down below, we have another Q item label with the property of caption and then scope opt email. And now below this closing Q select, let's have Q card actions. In here, let's have a button with the label of cancel, yeah, which just hides the dialog. And then also let's have a button yeah, for adding users, which calls add users, which calls add users to room action. And this action makes a request to our API. Okay. And now here I get an error somehow, but I don't know why. Yeah. So what we can do now is we can try it out. Let's see what's happening here. Nothing is happening at the moment. So let's go to our store. We are correctly toggling it. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing is happening because what we need to do is we need to go to our room list and add this component, yeah? <laughs> so let's import it. Um, add chat room dialog. And now we can add it above here. Like this. Mm, now let's see what's happening. Okay, we get this error. And something has gone wrong here, yeah? I wish I knew what it was. And of course here we need to have an opening tag. Q item section, right? And now let's try it out. Yeah, we see our dialog here. But we don't see any content. And we made a mistake here. Ay, 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 ay. Let's see what we have here. Of course, this must be Q stepper, like this. And also here, Q stepper. And now it looks much better. Let's try it out. All right. Here we get an error. Let's see what it is about. We are sending the room name. Okay. Let's go to our back end. And first of all, let's check our database. 
Okay, here we see we don't have a name column. So let's go to our migration. All right, we totally forgot to add a name column here. So what we can do is php artisan migrate rollback minus minus step is equal to two. Yeah. So we roll back the migration of this and this. Let's do it. And now let's migrate it again. And now it should have a name. I have to refresh. There you go. Now it has a name column. Now let's go to the chat room model. And here we need to say protected fillable and we need to add the name. Now let's try it again. All right, this worked. Now we are already here. Yeah, this is now the current step, step two. Step one is done. And now here we can search for users. Let's see. We can search for one, two, three. Let's try it out. And here nothing is happening at the moment, which is bad. All right. Not sure why that is. So what we can do is let's go to add users. Let's add a console.log. Add users. And let's see if something gets printed to the console. This works. And now let's see. All right, somehow the problem is the filter function, yeah? not this button here. Um, let's see whether this filter function gets called or not. This is not getting called. Yeah, we still have an error. Um, why is that is? Why is that is? And here is the mistake I made. Yeah, it should be filter, of course. And now this thing should work. Let's try it out again. Um, now let's see what we get here. One, two, three. All right, we get an arrow. Why we get this? API search users could not be found. Interesting. Let's go back to our backend. All right, we haven't implemented the route yet, so let's do that now. For that, let's create a new controller. PHP artisan make controller user controller. And in here, let's create a message public function search users, which gets the request. And then we get the query from the URL, the query parameter, by using a request input query. Let's get the current user, which is the auth user, or the user from the request. And now what we want to do here in this search user method, we want to search for all the users, but not the current user, yeah? We want to exclude him. And this is important because the user who is creating the room is already attached to it, yeah? 
This is what we've done here in the chat room controller previously. So we don't want to find this current user. So let's do it. Users, current user, and then we say where, and here we say ID should not be equal to the ID of the current user. Yeah, so by doing this, we, we are excluding the user who has created the chat room. Next, we have another where, and in here, we are saying we, and in, and in here, we are saying name, comma, like, yeah. So we are looking um, for the name. If, if the query contains letters that match a name, yeah, that match a name of a user in the database, so to speak. But also we want to search for or where we want to search in the email column, yeah? And also check if there's something that could be searched for, yeah? Like this. So what this does is it excludes the user who has created the room and then it searches in the name and email column for a query and by using this like here, yeah, like and then this wildcard operator, we don't have to type the complete name or email, but just a part of it, yeah, and then this will be found. All right, now let's say get to get the actual users and we can return them like so. That's it. Now in our API routes here, let's have another route. Yeah, search users, <coughs> which goes to search users and called search users, which is our method, yeah, which should be our method, search users. <coughs> Let's do PHP artisan optimize. And now let's try it again. Okay. I always forget it, guys. I always forget it. We also need to import it here. PHP artisan optimize again. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Here I made a mistake. Or where? No double E in this case. Let's try it again. And it's working. Yeah. You see our beautifully made Q select here. Custom design, so to speak. Yeah. We show a little. A little icon here, yeah, because at the moment we don't have a avatar URL, yeah, and then also we show the name and email, yeah, this is what we've done. Now let's try to click on it and now add users, and this also worked. Now we have two users here, yeah. The one who has created the room and then also the other one that we added. But we don't see anything here. So let's see what's happening here. Message not found in chat room. Okay. Let's go to our chat room model. And here we are using message. But at the moment we don't have a message model, yeah? So we need to create one. Oh my God. PHP artisan make model 
message. And also we need to make a migration for this. Let's go to the message model. And in here we need to have a protected fillable array with bunch of stuff, user ID, chat room ID, content and image URL. Yeah, because a message can contain an image. So we need an image URL here as well. And so and also we need a user ID and chat room ID because the message can belong to a user, of course, or belongs to a user, not can, <laughs> yeah. And um, it belongs to a chat room. All righty. Now let's go to the create messages table migration here. And in here, let's add columns. Let's add content and image URL here as string. And then also two foreign keys, our user ID and chat room ID for the relationships. All right. <clears throat> now let's do PHP artisan migrate. And with that in place, let's try it again. All right, let's try it out. Now it has worked. And we are also getting the chat rooms, yeah. One thing though, we were able to find ourselves in there, right? And this should not be possible here, yeah. We find two users. And we have only two users. So one user has created this room, yeah? And which user was it? Let's see. Application, user, yeah. One, two, three, four created it. Hmm, why do we find him? Let's go back to our back end. Let's go to user controller. And yeah, maybe let's do it differently. Maybe let's do it differently. This first part is correct. But now let's say where. Um, where. And then. In here, we call a function. Yeah, we are using a subquery here. And first of all, we fetch um, we fetch all the users except the one with the current ID. Yeah, this is what we are doing here. And then we are doing subqueries to filter out even further. Yeah, and let's try it out. Uh, wait, maybe we have to refresh, but I don't think so. One, two, three. All right, now we do not find anything here. What's going on now? It's empty. And sure, one thing here, we need to add get, yeah. Otherwise we don't get the actual users here. And now let's try again. Yep, now it's working. We are just getting one user and it is the user that has not created the room, yeah? Because the user who has created the room is already attached um, to it, yeah? In this pivot table here. So yeah, 
this is working, I think. But now the big question is why we don't see anything in here. And ah, yeah, I think it is because now we need to keep working on this room list here yeah, because we are not done with it. Let's go back to our room list. And now below this closing queue avatar and div tag here, let's create another queue item section with a class of QML md and flex start and in here let's have a q item label with a class of text weight bold text gray nine row items baseline and in here we render room name colon and then another diff with the class of text body to qmlxs and in this diff let's say chat room dot name and then let's have uh, another diff here vf chat room last message and we are using a vif directive here because initially once a room has been created there is no last message yeah because it's empty yeah nothing has been written in it so we need to check for it and for the case that we have a last message we can basically display another queue item label and then we can display last message from and then we can use the sender name here. Yeah? And then accordingly to this here, we can add a few more details. We can um, show the content. <clears throat> And then also send at yeah the date and so on the time and then below this diff with the vif directive we can have another q item section with uh, v else directive and then on the side yeah as property we can render another Q item label, yeah, no messages yet, like this. And with that in place, we should actually see something, but we don't see anything. So let's go <coughs> to our components, a room list component here, and let's see what we have here. All right, we have the rooms in state, but we don't see them, huh? Interesting. Let's see what we are doing here in the script section. We are getting the rooms and we are looping over them, huh? All right, now there's still a problem. I've debugged it for quite some time, you know, we don't see any chat rooms here, yeah? Although we have plenty of them in our database. And also when going to our view dev tools, we see that our room list has rooms in state and it's also connected to our Pioneer store room, yeah? Which has all these seven rooms in state. So why nothing is displayed is because I made a mistake here. This div here should not be closing after this text here. Yeah? Let's get rid of that here. And now let's provide a closing div here. And with that in place, da -da, we see 
our beautiful list here, yeah, with all the rooms. And now look what we have here. <laughs> this menu here with this nice flip animation. Beautiful, huh? right? And now let's click go to room. And we go to this actual room here. You see? The room ID changes. And also we can update a room. No, we can't at the moment because we need to implement the dialog for this. And you see, we can also delete a room. Yeah, this also works. Let's try to add another one. Yeah, this also works. One thing though, here the other tasks were not shown instantly. Next, let's implement the update chat chat room dialog dot view. And this is basically very similar to the add chat room dialog. Template. And then we have a script section. Script setup lang TypeScript. So I will quickly go over this. Let's import a few things. Our room store, a ref, store to ref, user store, user type, or user interface, I should say, use Quasar. Now let's create a dollar $q variable by using use Quasar. Then also let's define some props. Yeah, We expect a room to update ID. Yeah, This is the ID of the room that we are going to update. Let's also have a users ref, yeah, which is of type user array. And now let's use this prop here to find the room to update in our global store by comparing the IDs. Then here we have our filter function. And this is the same filter function that we have used before in our add chat room dialog. And then we have an update room function here. So here we only want to update the room if there's one. Yeah, so we need a if check here. And then we call the update room action. Then also we hide the update dialog again. And then we display queue notify. And then we display a nice toaster message that the room has been updated. Otherwise we say room update failed. And now here the template is pretty much the same as well. So I just paste everything in here. Um, one thing though is that here we use for vModel show update room dialog. Yeah, Another Boolean in our use room store. We have toggle show add dialog and then also we have show add room dialog and show update room dialog. Yeah, And based on this Boolean we show this update dialog. Then also here we need to make sure that we have a room to update. Yeah, So we need to make sure we check for it. And then here we need another text of course, update room. And the other one we had add room. And what else? Here as we model we use our room to update uh, that we got from our global store by using the ID that we got as props. And then last but not least, we call update room here, yeah? which is this function. And with that in place, let's try it out, but it will not work. Yeah? Why is that? Because in our room list, we need to add this dialog. Import update chat room dialog. Let's edit above. 
Wait, how did I name it? Update chat room dialog is correct. Let's close it. Now we get an error here. And that is because we need to provide a room to update ID, which is a um, room to update ID, like this, I think. And then here we get an error again because it can be undefined. So let's just do v if room update to ID. All right, now let's try it out. Update room. Still nothing is showing up. Let's see if we get an error. All right, we get errors here. Update chat room dialog. What's chat room dialog? All right, here, yeah? One closing text too much. Let's refresh. Let's try it out again. And yay, you see, it's already pre-populated and we have these nice so-called chips here, yeah? Because we said use chips and multiply, so we can choose multiply options. And then we should be able to update it. Let's try it out. Room updated. We should get the updated room back with just one user. And yeah, we should be fine. All right, perfect. Let's try out delete room. This works as well. Yeah, let's see if we get a correct API response back. Looking great. And now we can actually start to implement the chat window, yeah? So that we can actually chat with each other. So I would say, let's get started with the implementation of the chat window. And then also we will be implementing Pusher and WebSockets. We will make use of Laravel's broadcasting system. It will be a lot of fun and we will build tons of cool functionality. So stay tuned. So now that we have the functionality in place for going to rooms, creating rooms, updating rooms and deleting rooms, we want to start to implement the actual chat functionality. Yeah? We want to have the nice real time yeah, because that's what we want. We want to have a nice real-time chat application for real-time functionality in Laravel. We need to create events. So let's do it. PHP artisan make event message send. Then also let's make another event user is typing for our typing indicator and user stopped typing. Now it's important that you sign up for Pusher. Pusher is basically for free. It doesn't cost anything except you start to have a lot of traffic. You can go to Pusher channels pricing and you can see that you can have up to 200K messages and 100 concurrent um, connections. And this is basically all for free, yeah? And once you go over 200K, yeah, then you need to pay. And yeah, otherwise it's completely free. And once you are signed in, you are on your dashboard and then you simply create a new app. You can give it a name and you can hit create app. Once you created an app, you can choose them here. You click on your app and then you get a couple of credentials. And these credentials you need to add to your laravel.env file, yeah? 
to the, yeah, you need to add them to these environment variables here, yeah. Also the cluster, which is for me EU one, yeah. There are different clusters. You can choose one, and then you are almost good to go. But before you also need to make sure to go to app in config, yeah, app dot PHP in, in the config folder. And here you need to search for broadcast service provider. Yeah. And you need to make sure that it is uncommented. Otherwise, our real time functionality will not be working. When going to the official Laravel docs for broadcasting, you can see that we have to install something. Yeah. Pusher, pusher PHP server here. Grab this line, install it, and that's all the preparation we need. Now we need to get ready our events yeah, that we have created previously. So let's go to our events. Message sent event. And what this event will be doing is it will send the message to all connected clients except the one who basically created the message, yeah, who sent the message. Yeah? All others will get this message in real time and it will be added to their state in Pina, yeah? but the one who um, created or who sends this message will not receive this event. Yeah. And how this will be working is all connected clients except the user who sends this message will receive this message sent event with the corresponding message yeah, that was created by a user. But the user who created this message will not get it. Yeah. This is why we use broadcasting here and also Later, I will show you something on the front end that we need to, to do in order for Laravel to be able to broadcast. Yeah? Otherwise, this functionality will not work and all connected clients, also the one that created this message or sent this message, will get this message. And this is not good. Yeah? We want to make sure we are working with broadcasting and then also there's another method in Laravel, it's called to others. Yeah? And this will make sure that all other connected clients will get the message, but not the one who sends the message. <laughs> but you will see it soon. It's not very difficult. And here we need to implement something, an interface should broadcast. Yeah? Then here in the constructor, we need to add the message. So we can use it as property in this class. And then we have this broadcast on method here. And here we return a new presence channel. Yeah, a new presence channel. And why are we using a presence channel and not a private channel? The reason is the presence channel has some advanced functionality. For example, whenever a user comes online or joins a room, we get actually this event. We can grab it at the front end whenever a user joins a room and we can display it. That this user has just joined the room, for example. Yeah? And yeah, we have basically this kind of functionality with presence channel. We can also do some other things such as displaying a list of users that are online in the room and stuff like this. And this only works with present channel. And they are built on top of private channels. And private channels make sure that only authenticated users are able to listen to these channels and receive data. All right. So here we're using present channel. Yeah. So we have some nice functionality that we will be using and uh, I will explain a bit more to it later. We can close this message sent event. Let's go to the typing events. In here we want to have 
a username and a room ID as properties. Here in the constructor, we need to specify them. Oops. And here we can simply return a private channel yeah, with the room ID. And here we need a private channel only because we don't want the functionality to see whenever someone joined a room. This is not important here, we don't need it. So we can simply use a private channel. Next, we need to go to channels.php. And in here we will just have one more channel. Yeah, We will broadcast our events all to this channel here basically. And, and in here we will just have one more channel, yeah, channel.roomid, and in here we are doing a check, yeah, user is in room. And only for this case that the user is in the room, then we send some data, yeah, then the user will receive this event, otherwise he will not receive the event. Yeah? And this makes sense because all users that are in our room should receive the event. Yeah? That's <laughs> basically why we have different rooms. Yeah? And we use this in, is in room method. It's defined on our user model here. Yeah? It returns a boolean. Yeah? Whether or not the user is in the chat room. Yeah? And with that in place, we are done with setting up our events. Now let's create a controller. PHP artisan make controller. Message controller. Let's go to our message controller. In here, let's create a method, public function store message. It takes a request and we inject the chat room model. Then we have to validate the user input. And in this case, um, we expect a content field and an image field. Yeah? Content is basically the, the text of the message. And then also um, users can send um, images with the message. Yeah? So here we say it's nullable, so they don't have to send an image, but they can, they are allowed to. Yeah? And then we say it must be an image and it must be one of these types here, so to speak. And all right, yep. Now we can say if request has file yeah at this point we know it's an image yeah if there's a file then it must be an image because of this rule here what we can do then is we can create an image name and this should be unique we simply can use the time and then we can get the image extension to reconstruct an image name and then we can say request image and then we can say store as and then we store it in public chat room images and we give it the name of image name now let's construct the storage url by using the storage URL helper here. We need to import it from facades storage. Then we can say, let's create a new message. Message is equal to chat room. Yeah, we have access to our chat room model. Then we can say messages. And then we say create and we pass in an array. In this case, we must provide three columns, yeah, content. Then we have our image URL. This is what we named the um, column and then also the user ID. 
And what this does is it links a message to a chat room and to a user, yeah? Because a message not only belongs to a chat room, but it also belongs to a user. And by doing so, we create the relationship. All right. After that, let's say broadcast. We want to broadcast. And here we want to broadcast a new message sent event. And then in here, we say new message resource and we pass in our message, but that's not enough. We want to load the user relationship, yeah? We want the message and the corresponding user. Now let's import the message sent event here. And now here it is important to use two others, yeah? So the creator of the message should not receive this event. And why that is, you will see in a bit. And now let's say return response, JSON. And in here we say message and then new message resource. And then again, message load user, semicolon here. All right, and then for the case that the message has no image, then we simply do the same, but we are not providing an image URL, yeah? And then the rest is also the same, like this. Next, we have two other methods, and they are very simple. User is typing and user stop typing. And here we simply broadcast the events. And always to others, because the one who is typing doesn't need to receive the event in this case, yeah? And we need to make sure to import chat room and user stop typing, yeah? So make sure you have imported everything. Now we are done with this message controller. Now we need to go to our API routes. We need to add this route here for our broadcasting. We need to import this from facade broadcast. And we need this for our private and presence channels to work. Yeah, this is very important. We need this for authentication. And then also here we have our typing events. And last but not least, our route for sending messages here, yeah? Now we need to make sure to import all the controllers. We simply need the message controller here. That's it, right? And broadcast, yep, we have it here. And we are fine. Let's do PHP artisan optimize. And now let's do PHP artisan route list. And here you see that we have this broadcasting auth route. This is what we need in order to work with private and present channels. And you will see it on the front end in a bit how we work with it here, yeah? And this endpoint is provided by using this here, yeah? And hopefully I didn't forget anything. We should be good to go now. And we can start implementing the message send functionality on the front end now. All right, let's start in our chat window.view file here. Let's create a script section with setup tag and len is equal to ts. In here, we import a bunch of stuff again. We need a lot of stuff here. Yeah, ref on mounted, next tick, watch on unmounted, computed, use router. Then we need our types, chat room, message, user. Then we need the queue scroll area type, use quasar hook. 
Then we need our stores here, use room store, use user store, store to refs, and also API, echo and URL helper. And here you see echo. We don't have it at the moment. So this is what we need to install on our front end. So let me get the information about it. When going to our Laravel broadcasting docs here, you see that we have this line here. Yeah? We need to install this. And now let's go to our boot folder here and let's create another file named echo.ts. And here we need to import a bunch of stuff. We need to import echo from Laravel echo, then boot and also pusher from pusher.js. Then here we need to do something so we don't get a TypeScript error here. Yeah, this is just for TypeScript. We need to say that the window object has a pusher property, which is of type pusher. And then we can say window.pusher is equal to pusher. If we don't do it, we get an error here. Yeah. So this is why we do this. And then we can say the following here. Um, or we make it underneath. Yeah, here we need to create an echo instance. Broadcaster is pusher. We need to provide a key, which we have provided in our .env file and a cluster as well. Then since we are using private and present channels, we need to make sure that we are making proper use of authentication. And for that to work, we need to provide an authorization header here. And it must be in the form of a string starting with bearer, empty space. And then here we provide our token from our local storage. And now there's one important thing. We are almost done with this. Yeah, maybe I need to add this here. So we export echo here. So we can import it everywhere else. And we are done with this here. But one important thing, we need to go to our axis. And in here, we need to do something. And first of all, we need to import echo here. And then here above return config, we need to write this important line. Yeah, we need to provide the socket ID of echo. And only when doing this, we are able to make use of the two others method in Laravel. Yeah, because we don't want to send the message sent event to everybody, yeah, and also the user is typing event and user stop typing, yeah. We only want to send it to the ones who didn't initiate it, so to speak, yeah. And for that to work, we need to make use of this line and we need to add the socket ID here. Otherwise, this wouldn't work. And now we are done with this. Let's keep going with our chat window. First of all, let's create a router by saying const router is equal to use router. Then we need to create a chat room ID by using computed. And this is very important. If we don't use computed here, chat room ID is not reactive and it stays the same. And then when going to another chat room, the chat room ID stays the same. And this is really bad because we need this chat room ID to do a bunch of stuff. For example, fetching the content of a chat room, which, um, is, uh, which are the messages and so on. So this is really crucial that this is reactive and we do it by using computed here. Also, we need to access the user from the global store yeah, by, by using store to refs and then our user store. We need to create a dollar $q variable here and then we want to create an array and which is a um, ref and it's of type string array and what this is you will see in a bit 
and we need to have a message text because each message has a text. Then selected image, which is a ref of type file for the case that we want to send an image. Then the Boolean is typing, yeah, whether the user is typing or not. Then we need to make another ref of type HTML input element or null. Then we create a variable named typing timeout. This is what we need for the typing indicator to work. You will see it a bit later. And then also we need to create a message container, which is a ref also of type Q scroll area or null. We use this for automatic scrolling because whenever somebody receives a message or writes a message, we want the scroll area to automatically scroll to the bottom, to the last message, yeah? This is what this is for. And then also we want to calculate something, the container width. We, we have done this um, before already and we want to calculate it based on the number of views. Also, we want to access a single room, which is the room that we are in. Yeah? And then on mounted, here we call setup listeners and then also we call fetch room by ID. And I think we don't have this here. Yeah? We forgot it. So let's see if we have it. Let's go to room store. Fetch a room. Ah, okay. Yeah. I have a capital B here. Let's make it lowercase. And now this error should be gone. All right. Now I would say let's create this setup listeners here. And I simply will paste it in. It's a long function, but it's very simple. Yeah, it's not much of a complicated logic here. Let me explain to you what we are doing here. So the idea is whenever the chat window component mounts, yeah, that we set up our listeners or whenever we change a room, yeah, meaning Whenever this parameter changes, so we change the room, then we want to run this here. Yeah, This is the idea. And what we are doing here is we start um, joining different rooms. Here, for example, we are joining a present channel. Yeah, And we have this here method and also joining. And we are using a present channel here because then we can use q.notify and say that somebody has joined. Yeah, this is really cool functionality. And we also can do the same for the case that somebody is leaving. Yeah? And this is only possible with um, present channels. Then also we are listening for the message sent event. And whenever we edit a message yeah, and all clients received a new message, we scroll auto automatically to the bottom. We have to implement this function as well. And then here we start also listening to a private channel. Yeah? And this is for our typing events. User is typing and user stop typing. And for the case that somebody receives this, we check if the user is already in this array. If he's not in this array, we push his username in it. Then for the case that somebody receives this event here, we check whether the user that is typing is already in this array. If he's in this array, then we splice him. Yeah. So at this index, we splice this user out of this array. We splice, we perform splice and we only cut one item out. Yeah. So to speak. And this is what we are doing here. And now 
we are able to use it in here in our on mounted we will also be using it somewhere else and i will explain a bit more why we have to use it somewhere else as well so here we are using it on mounted this makes sense and now we also need to make sure that we have the on unmounted lifecycle hook here and here we stop listening yeah we say echo dot disconnect and we are disconnected and this is really important because otherwise we get strange behavior and we can even get memory leaks so this is why we need to make use of this here on unmounted lifecycle hook and then echo dot disconnect now let's create scroll to bottom here maybe we do it here above and let me paste it in to save some time so yeah what are we doing here first of all we check whether we have a message container or not if we don't have one <laughs> there's nothing to do there's nothing to scroll yeah so we can't do anything then we say await next tick so we wait until everything has been updated until the message has been added to the chat window and so on and then what we are doing is we get the scroll target and by getting this scroll target here we can get the scroll height and once we have the scroll height we can set the new scroll position yeah we say it must be vertical and then we provide the scroll height here and this will make sure that we are always scrolled to the bottom yeah and whenever we get a new message it will be automatically scrolled to the very last message yeah all right now let's create two other functions emit user is typing and emit user stop typing next we need to make use of watch and in watch here we have to use a function that returns two things it returns the parameter that we want to watch which is in our case current route value params dot room id yeah so whenever the room id changes meaning whenever we change the room then this thing should fire and then the second thing here that will be returned is a function which is async and this function receives two parameters new room id and old room id and here in the function body we say if no new room id then we want to return then we don't want to do anything then for the case that new room id is not equal to old room id only then we want to do a bunch of stuff because otherwise we are in the same room so there's no need to do anything and what we can do in here is we say echo.leave chat room old room id yeah so we're basically leaving the old room and we have to do it here because whenever we change the room by going to another room id here this on unmounted is not fired yeah and why is it not fired it is because in our routing this component basically stays alive because we don't change the routing here yeah we just change this number and due to this this component stays alive and because of this we need to make sure we use watch here yeah and then here we can do a bunch of stuff so after we have been disconnected from the old room we can start to set up our listeners and we can start to listen to the new room all right and then also whenever we change the id here we need to fetch the content of the new room meaning the messages and so on so here we need to say await use room store fetch room by id and that's all we need to do here 
let's provide closing brackets like this and we are good to go and then we create another function format time which takes a string which is a date it creates a new date object and then we turn it into a string of a specific format so to speak yeah now let's create another function send message async and this error function receives an event of type event and in here first of all whenever there is no message text and there is no image then it doesn't make sense to send a message then we don't do anything yeah except an early return <clears throat> then for the case we passed this here we will be creating a new form data object and we will append the content and the image and we need to use form data because um, when sending an image we need to have form data now we can do try catch here after this line here we get the error and the try block we can say await use room store send message and pass in the data and the chat room id here we have to say dot value because it's a ref and after that we can set the message text to an empty array and also we can say for the case that we have an image uploader we can set the value to an empty string as well and here we need to say double value because it's a ref next we can set the selected image ref also to undefined and we can scroll to bottom and that's it for the case that we get an error we can use q notify and say error sending message now since we are hiding the image input and we are making use of a button we need to trigger the image upload somehow and we are doing this by referencing this image uploader and then we can perform a click action on it yeah and how this works you will see in a bit and then also we need another function and first of all we need to close the send message function here like this now let's create a on key up function and here we say if typing timeout exists yeah then we want to clear the timeout meaning there's already a timeout so we want to get rid of it then here we are basically creating a typing timeout and here we set it to two seconds and then for the case that is typing is not true then we want to emit user is typing yeah and otherwise if the user has not been typing for two seconds so to speak then we send the user stopped typing event otherwise yeah if the user keeps typing on key up we always clear this um, timeout here and this here will be never executed yeah this in here yeah so to speak and by that we are basically done with our script section now let's code out our template here in here let's create a diff with a class of chat window <coughs> and also we only want to render this if we have a room then in here let's have another div with a class of header 
And in here, let's have uh, h6 with class of room name. And in here, let's say chat with double curly brackets, then room.users.map. We access each user here, and then we simply return user user.name and then we say join and in here we say comma empty space and what we are doing here is first of all we are creating a new array which simply contains the name of the users and then we take this array and turn this into a simple string yeah and each username is separated by a comma yeah but it's just one string all right now below this closing h6 tag let's write a comment <coughs> display avatar group of the users of this room in here let's say div colon style then let's provide curly brackets let's say widths and then here avatar container widths we pass in the room and then also position relative and height 100 percent let's also add a class of collect center row qmb large and then in this div here, let's have Q avatar v4 user comma index in room users key is equal to user dot id colon source is equal to url user.avatar url let's say size is 50 pixel now for the style we say backticks in here and then we say left colon then dollar sign curly brackets index times 25 closing curly bracket and then pixel this will create a nice overlapping effect you will see it soon now let's say color is equal to primary text color is white class is equal to qmrsm and here we also say overlapping now in this avatar here let's have an image yeah for the case that we have an avatar url otherwise we just display an icon here and now let's see what we have here do we get any errors of course now we get this error here yeah that a uh, pusher key is needed so make sure that you pass in the view app pusher key and the view app pusher cluster in your env file here yeah this is very important i simply do it and once you have done this you probably need to restart let's do it Control c and let's start again now below this closing avatar tag and these two closing diffs let's implement the scrollable chat window q scroll area class messages ref message container style scroll area 
style. Let's close this scroll area and in here oh we have to create this function here I think we will do it soon in here let's have a transition group and this is used for a nice animation you will see it in action soon let's say appear is true And then let's have two props here, enter active class and leave active class. Yeah. So we use some nice animations here. Also, when working with these animations, we need to go to the config file. And here we need to look for animations. And we need to add them. Yeah, this is important. You can read more about it in here. And we can use these animations if we provide them here. So fade in left and fade out. Like this. All right. Now in this transition group, let's have a cute chat message component v4 message in room dot messages key message dot id avatar is equal to url message dot sender dot avatar url and then also we have a name yeah which is the sender of the message then here send yeah so here we are comparing two ids and and then we don't need this text property here yeah but important here, we have the send props here. And by using this, we um, choose the message style. Yeah? So we can separate them. Yeah, Who is the sender and who is the receiver, so to speak. And this is why we have the sender object here on this message. Yeah? All right. Now, let's say bg color yeah and in this case let me paste it in here we choose different background colors based on whether we have a sender or a receiver so to speak and the same goes for the text color as well now below this q chat message let's have a diff and in this diff, we display the message content as well as the image for the case that we have an image URL. Yeah? And sorry, it is important that the QChat message is not self closing and that we wrap the content here with the closing QChat message tag, like this. Now, down below this Q scroll area tag here, let's implement typing indicator. Message, image, inputs, and buttons. Let's have a diff with a class of message input container and with style of 
message input container style. We also need to create this. <clears throat> and in here we have a transition. Here we don't need to use a transition group because we just have one element. We use fade in and fade out as animation. We also need to make sure to provide them in this array. Here we need to say fade in. <clears throat> and now let's paste this in. For the case that we have a user that is typing, yeah, then we want to display this diff here. And then, based on the number, whether it's higher than one, then we use R or is, yeah, for, for plural or singular. And that's it for the typing indicator. Now below this transition, we have a bunch of things, and I simply will paste them in. And here we have a input, yeah, for the message text, which fires on key up. And then also we have a hidden input here and on change it fires handle image upload. And then also we have a button here, which is responsible for clicking on this input, so to speak, yeah? <laughs> because this thing here is not visible. Instead, we are showing this button here. And then also we have a send message button here. Now let's see why we don't have these two things here. I think we have created them all on key up. All right, we named it differently like this. Handle image upload. All right, we don't have this and we don't have this. Let's start with scroll area style. Let's create it somewhere, const scroll area style. And here we are using this to adjust um, the height, yeah, based on the width. And now we also need to create this thing here, const message input container style and I paste it in, yeah. And here we simply add padding bottom um, for the case that we are um, lower than medium. We are also doing this so we can see the message input here and stuff like this. Otherwise, this would be hidden by this bottom navigation. And then also we need to create something else here. Or and the image upload here, yeah? I thought we have created it, but let's create it. Handle in image upload, we receive the event. Then we get the target from the event. We get the file and then we set selected image to this file. Okay, with that in place, let's see what we get here. There we go. And now let's see what happens if we type something in here and we hit send. And you see we get this awesome animation and it is because we are using a transition group. And yeah, this is why we are getting this and it works perfectly. It's super cool. And also now when I refresh, we also get this animation here. Yeah, because we set appear to true. Let's try to upload an image. And this seems to be not working. Let's refresh. 
all right, we don't see this image here. Why is that? Okay, here we see we get this error. It doesn't find it. Let's go back to our backend. Here we have our storage, app public, chat room images, like this. Now let's go to public here. And all right, we have it because we need to run a comment php artisan and then here oh my god what is this storage link and now you see under public we have the storage folder as well with the chat room images and now we should be able to see it here there you go yeah this works now. Now let's log in with another account on another browser here. John Doe at gmail.com. Name is John Doe. Password 123. Now let's click on this first room here. Let's update it. Test room one. Let's add John, yeah, John Doe, update room. Now let's go to chat rooms here. We sh now we see the room here because we are part of this room. Let's click on it. Let's go to room. And here we should see that John Doe has joined the room. Beautiful. Now let's try to type something here. We should also see it here. Why do we not see it? Let's go to network. All right, this does not work. Why is that? All right, something not working here. We don't see any errors. And I found the error, I think. Here, yeah, we have our user as typing event. We need to make sure that it implements, should broadcast. Let's check user stop typing. And here we need to implement it as well, should broadcast. Now let's try it again. And here you see, it's working. John Doe is typing, you see it here. And does it stop as well? It doesn't stop, let's refresh. Let's try it. John Doe is typing. All right, something not working correctly here. Why is that? All right. One big mistake here, why we permanently see this user is typing here, yeah? Wait, where is it? Yeah, when we type here, you see it stays in this status here, yeah? John Doe is typing, which is not correct. And the reason for this is here we need to, oops, of course, we need to return a private channel and then here chat room dot room id yeah? and then also we need to provide these things here in the constructor like so and then also we need to define the properties above like so and now now let's try to type and it works you see when i stop typing after two seconds it disappears correctly but now you see we have some shifting here which is not nice so let's work on it and let's make the typing indicator look really nice 
So for that, let's go back to our front end. And here we need to make use of bunch of classes. Yeah. So let's say style, scope, and in here let's define a header. Yeah. Let's make the header look nice like this. Let's style the room name like so. Let's style the messages. Flex grow is one. And let's give it a nice background color here. Yeah. Let's style the message input container. Position relative. And also the message input. And also the button maybe. Uh, maybe we don't need this. And now let's work on the typing indicator. Here we make use of position absolute, so it does not shift the input anymore. Give it a nice background color, and then also a shadow, and then we make sure it's centered, yeah? Now let's try it out. Uh, maybe we should refresh. All right, let's try it out. And here you see it, yeah? Looks pretty nice already. Let's also add message. Yeah, works perfectly. All right, anyway, let's keep working on this here. Let's provide another class overlapping here. Yeah, and here we say position absolute and we give it a nice white border and now it looks pretty, pretty nice. All right, now we really need to fix this UI here. Yeah? This looks really bad. And the reason for this is I made a mistake in the roomless component. Yeah? We have this diff here with the row class and this must include the router view here. Yeah? And by just doing this, you see, we're already getting this here, yeah? So this must be one row, so to speak. And here you see that we are saying that the chat room list should take four spaces, so to speak. But here we don't say how many spaces this should take. So here we need to provide some classes and wrap the router view with a div. And then I paste in a bunch of classes. Now we can say, for example, on small devices, yeah, we want to uh, the, we want the chat window to take the whole width, yeah, and then on MD. We want just to take it eight spaces because, let me see how this works. Yeah, so here on large devices, we say um, this should be eight units wide, while um, the rest here while the rest should be four, yeah? So all together we have 12 units. And I think this looks pretty nice already, yeah? Now, on smaller devices, we want it to be that the room list here takes the whole width and also this thing here, right? Should take the whole width. And I think, all right, this looks really bad as well. So what we do, we need to add some classes here to this div here below this row div in Rome list. And let's add, I think we need call MD4 here. This is what we need. 
Let's try it out. All right. Yeah, this is what we needed. Yeah, I think this is fine here. Yeah? Let's improve a little bit more the design here. Let's go to our chat window and we can add a bit more CSS. Let's give the chat window a border left. And we should see it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, and I think this is pretty much fine. Here is still tons of room for improvement. Feel free to improve it to make it as pretty as you can. Yeah, just this here is just the beginning. And I would say now let's implement the profile update um, functionality here. Yeah. Okay, now it's the time of the day where we are going to fix a few bugs and improve the UI a bit. We start with the first thing, which you already see here, which doesn't look nice. Yeah, you see here, we are not able to load an image. Yeah, and this looks really bad. And the reason being, yeah, we simply have the base URL here, but then we have null. Yeah, and this is really bad, but luckily it's easy to fix. Yeah, we have to go to our chat window and then we have to go to our QChat message component here. Yeah, and here we have this avatar. Yeah, and here the problem is the URL helper, yeah, which just returns the base URL and appends null so to speak and this is really bad what we can do here instead is we can grab this argument here message sender avatar url and then in front here of the url helper let's paste it in let's do a question mark because we are making use of the ternary operator and then after this url we simply say undefined like so Undefined, huh? undefined, sorry. <laughs> and now you see that it looks much better. And yeah, currently we don't see any user avatar here. And the reason being is that by default, our users have no avatar URL. Yeah, so we need to create the ability to update the user's profile and to upload an avatar image. And this is what we will be doing soon. One more thing though, you see this is really black and also this here as well, which doesn't look really nice. Here we use a nice gray, yeah. So let's change this a bit. Let's go to our main layout. And then here to the second diff here, and here we simply add text gray nine maybe or something like this. Yeah, and it's better. But ideally we should use the same color as below. Yeah, let's see what we've used here. Okay, here we have used eight. So let's use eight here as well. And now it looks better, I think. Yeah. And also let's put in some margin here. You see, we have no spacing here, which looks really bad. So uh, let's work on this. We can simply go to the QChat message component and here we can apply a class. Let's say Q, Q margin all and maybe MD. And now we have some margin here. Yeah which looks a little bit better. All right. And with that in place, let's start to implement the profile update functionality. And for that, let's go to the back end. All right, now let's create another controller 
PHP Artisan Mac Controller Settings Controller. Let's go to the Settings Controller. In here we will have two methods. The first being public function update avatar, which takes a request. And then here it expects a field from the front end avatar, yeah, which is an image and which can have these types and so on and which is required. Then after this block of code, we can get our user, yeah, auth user. And now we want to check whether the user has already uploaded an avatar. And if this is the case, then we want to delete the old avatar. And after that, we will store the new avatar, so to speak. Yeah, so let's do that. We can say if we can make use of a storage helper coming from facades storage. Then we say exists. Here we say public avatars. And then we append base name user avatar. Yeah, so if the user has already uploaded an avatar, then we want to delete it. Yeah, and by using the space name, we are basically getting the image name. All right, then after this if check here, let's store the new avatar. For that, let's create a unique name, avatar name. And for example, we can take the user ID, then append underscore avatar, then we can also append the time, and then also the extension yeah, of the image. After that, we can say request avatar store as, and we want to store it under public avatars, comma, avatar name. Then let's create the avatar URL by using another storage helper called URL here. And then we say avatars dot avatar name. And this must be avatars and A is missing. Then we can update our user with the avatar URL here. We can save the user, so it's persistent. And then we say return response JSON in here an array with the key of user, which is our user, like so. And here we need a semicolon, and that should be it, I think. Yep. And here we don't need this validated. We can get rid of it because we don't use it in here. Now let's have another function, which is very simple. So I just paste it in, yeah, update name. We expect a new name and then we get the user. We update the name column here. We save the user and we return the updated user. Yeah? That's it. Now let's go to our API routes. And in here we will have two other routes. Let me close this terminal window. Yeah. One is for updating the avatar and the other one is for updating the user name. And now let's do, yeah, we have to do it. I totally forgot about it. But first of all, let's import the settings controller. And now we can do php artisan optimize. 
Yep. And we are done with the backend implementation. Now let's head to the front end and start implementing the functionality for our profile settings. And now I would say we simply can update our user store because this is user related, yeah, the profile settings. So let's go to our user state and add another property in here, which is show update settings dialog, yeah, which is a Boolean. And then also we need to return it here. Initially it's false. And then we also need an action in here, which simply toggles the update settings dialog. Comma, and we are good to go here. That's it for now here. We can close this file. We can also close a few other things here. Now let's create a new component and we name it update settings dialog dot view. Okay, let's go to this newly created component. Let's create a template settings And let's also create a script section with setup and length is equal to TypeScript. Now let's head to the main layout. Let's import this component in here. Import update settings dialog. Let's edit underneath this queue layout check update settings dialog like so now let's head to our diff here with q avatar where we currently have this dark toggle here yeah for turning on and off the dark mode in here which looks fantastic but here we say now use user store and then um, show update settings dialog. And then toggle update settings dialog like so, but here we get an error. Why is that? Let's go to our user store again. Okay, we named it differently. And sorry for that here, of course. <laughs> this is too much in here. We can get rid of one action property. And now this should work here, yep. Let's try it out. Let's go to our Pioneer store. Let's go to our user store. Show update settings dialog. Let's see if this works. And now let's grab this and paste it in down below for our mobile navigation. Where is it? Here we have our Qtab with the avatar. Let's add on click here and let's paste it in like so. Now let's try it out. Let's go to our view dev tools. Let's go to our pioneer store and then user here and let's see if the toggle works. Yep, it works. We are also getting a specific user which will be put into our dialog. Yeah. So we pre-populate the dialog with the username and yeah. So now let's work on the implementation of the update settings dialog. So let's get back to this component. Let's close all these. 
let's add a queue dialog with a V model. We need to import it. Import use user store. Use user store and then show update settings dialog, which is a boolean responsible for toggling this dialog. In there, let's have a queue card with a queue card section. Then let's have a title in a div with a class of text h6 and then we have update profile in here then let's have another div and in here we have a queue uploader and for that to work we need to go to our script section and implement a few things let's get store to refs and let's get queue uploader function. Yeah, this is a type that we need. Then let's import ref and our URL helper. Now let's create two refs. Yeah, one is username, the other one is image URL. And then let's get our user from the Pioneer store by using our user store here and store to refs. Now let's create a simple function, update name, yeah, which calls update name, and we pass in our user. And what does update name? It basically makes an put request to our backend, and then it updates the user in our global store with the data that it got back from our API. Okay, and sorry, this must be used user store here. And for the queue uploader to work perfectly, we need another function. I named it update avatar URL in store and it gets access to XHR and we can use the response property to get the user. Yeah, and then we can update the user in our global store. And by doing so, we will be able to show the updated profile avatar immediately. Yeah. And now we need also another function, yeah, a factory function, which is of type Q uploader factory function. It gets access to files. And then we return a promise here, which we resolve. And here we can overwrite a few things. Yeah, Here we can say we want to use the following URL where we want to send the image to. Then also we can provide headers, yeah, an authorization header with our token here. Yeah? And then if there's some error, we can log it to the console if we want to do it like this. And with that, we have the script section completed. Now let's go to our queue uploader and let's add a few props to it. Let's say factory is equal to factory function. Class is queue margin top MD. Let's make it flat outlined Let's make it accept any image because we have some validation on the back end already in place. Color we can say is primary, so we have a nice blue. V model is image URL, V model image URL. Then label is select your avatar and then once the image is uploaded to our backend yeah we get access to this uploaded event and here we say update 
avatar URL in store, like so. And then also we can set auto upload to true. So once an image is selected, it will be automatically uploaded to our backend. Alrighty, nice. Now below this closing queue uploader tag and this closing div, let's have a queue input outlined v model is equal to user.name, label is username. And let's make it self closing. Down below, let's have queue card actions. And in here, let's have a queue BTN with a label of cancel. And on click, we want to do use user store toggle update settings dialog. Yep, like so. And then below this button, we have another button queue BTN with a label of update, color primary, and on click we execute update name, like so. Now let's try it out. Maybe we have to refresh and we don't see anything here, huh? What's going on here? All right, up. And here we have a warning, yeah? Failed to resolve. So let's see why that is why this component can't be resolved. Update settings dialog. This looks correct. Let's go to our main layout. We forgot to import it here. I thought we have done it. So let's import it like so. Now let's hit refresh. And here it is, yeah? And I would say it looks pretty amazing. Um, one thing here is one button is flat, the other one is not. So here the cancel button, we can also add, where is it? We have to go back to our update settings dialog and, and here we have the cancel button. We can also add flat, yeah, so we get rid of the shadow. This is your personal preference. And now let's try it out. Let's upload an avatar. And this does not work. Let's see if we get any errors. Nothing is happening here. And here, a stupid mistake by me. Here we need to make sure that this is image, yeah? Like so. And now let's try it out. And you see, it's beautifully working, yeah? We see an image preview, and we are even seeing the progress in percent here but we got an error. You see it's only 99%. So let's see what's happening here. Column not found. Avatar, all right. Yeah, we are sending the avatar to the backend. So let's go to our backend. Let's go to the settings controller. And here this line must be avatar URL, yeah? Because this is how we named our column here, yeah? avatar URL. Now let's try it out again. And you see our avatar is immediately updated and here we get 100%, yeah? So this is a beautiful component I find, yeah, provided by Quasar with great functionality. And now let's go to our chat window. Here we have to hit refresh. And now you see we have our avatar here, yeah? Pretty, pretty nice. Uh, maybe let's update it again. Let's take this one. Yeah, here it updates in real time. We could also make it that this updates immediately as well. Now, there's one more issue. Yeah, when looking at the room list here, you see that this looks really bad, right? So we need to make sure that the image is always round, no matter what dimension it has. So let's fix that now. For that, let's go to our room list component and let's implement a CSS class here. Round avatar. Let's say border radius is 50% and let's say height is 100% and width is 100%, like so. And now 
it's already working here because we have previously added the round avatar class to this queue image. So this looks great now, I would say. Yeah. Pretty, pretty amazing. And with that, we are done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned a few new things. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you in another big project. Okay, now it's the time of the day where we are going to fix a few bugs and improve the UI a bit. We start with the first thing, which you already see here, which doesn't look nice. Yeah, you see here, we are not able to load an image. Yeah, and this looks really bad. And the reason being, yeah, we simply have the base URL here, but then we have null. Yeah, and this is really bad. But luckily, it's easy to fix. Yeah, we have to go to our chat window. And then we have to go to our queue chat message component here. Yeah. And here we have this avatar. Yeah. And here the problem is the URL helper. Yeah. Which just returns the base URL and appends null, so to speak. And this is really bad. What we can do here instead is we can grab this argument here, message sender avatar URL. And then in front here of the URL helper, let's paste it in. Let's do a question mark because we are making use of a ternary operator. And then after this URL, we simply say undefined, like so, undefined, huh? undefined, sorry. <laughs> and now you see that it looks much better. And yeah, currently we don't see any user avatar here. And the reason being is that by default, our users have no avatar URL. Yeah, so we need to create the ability to update the user's profile and to upload an avatar image. And this is what we will be doing soon. One more thing though, you see this is really black and also this here as well, which doesn't look really nice. Here we use a nice gray, yeah. So let's change this a bit. Let's go to our main layout. And then here to the second diff here. And here we simply add text gray nine maybe or something like this. Yeah, and it's better. But ideally we should use the same color as below. Yeah, let's see what we've used here. Okay, here we have used eight. So let's use eight here as well. And now it looks better, I think. Yeah. And also let's put in some margin here. You see, we have no spacing here, which looks really bad. So let's work on this. We can simply go to the QChat message component and here we can apply a class. Let's say Q, Q margin all and maybe MD. And now we have some margin here, yeah, which looks a little bit better. All right. And with that in place, let's start to implement the profile update functionality. And for that, let's go to the back end. All right, now let's create another controller. PHP artisan make controller settings controller. Let's go to the settings controller. In here, we will have two methods. The first being public function update avatar, which takes a request. And then here it expects a field from the front end avatar, yeah, which is an image and which can have these types and so on and which is required. Then after this block of code, 
we can get our user, yeah, auth user, and now we want to check whether the user has already uploaded an avatar, and if this is the case, then we want to delete the old avatar, and after that, we will store the new avatar, so to speak. Yeah, so let's do that. We can say if we can make use of a storage helper coming from facades storage, then we say exists. Here we say public avatars, and then we append base name user avatar. Yeah, so if the user has already uploaded an avatar, then we want to delete it. Yeah, and by using the space name, we are basically getting the image name. All right, then after this if check here, let's store the new avatar. For that, let's create a unique name, avatar name. And for example, we can take the user ID, then append underscore avatar, then we can also append the time, and then also the extension yeah, of the image. After that, we can say request avatar store as, and we want to store it under public avatars, comma, avatar name. Then let's create the avatar URL by using another storage helper called URL here. And then we say avatars dot avatar name. And this must be avatars and A is missing. Then we can update our user with the avatar URL here. We can save the user, so it's persistent, and then we say return response JSON in here an array with the key of user, which is our user, like so. And here we need a semicolon, and that should be it, I think, yep. And here we don't need this validated, we can get rid of it because we don't use it in here. Now let's have another function, which is very simple. So I just paste it in, yeah, update name. We expect a new name and then we get the user, we update the name column here, we save the user and we return the updated user. Huh? That's it. Now let's go to our API routes. And in here we will have two other routes. Let me close this terminal window. Yeah. One is for updating the avatar and the other one is for updating the user name. And now let's do, yeah, we have to do it. I totally forgot about it. But first of all, let's import the settings controller. And now we can do PHP artisan optimize. Yep. And we are done with the backend implementation. Now let's head to the front end and start implementing the functionality for our profile settings. And now I would say we simply can update our user store because this is user related, yeah, the profile settings. So let's go to our user state and add another property in here, which is show update settings dialog, yeah, which is a Boolean. And then also we need to return it here. 
initially it's false. And then we also need an action in here, which simply toggles the update settings dialog. Comma, and we are good to go here. That's it for now here. We can close this file. We can also close a few other things here. Now let's create a new component and we name it update settings dialog dot view. Okay, let's go to this newly created component. Let's create a template settings And let's also create a script section with setup and length is equal to TypeScript. Now let's head to the main layout. Let's import this component in here. Import update settings dialog. Let's edit underneath this queue layout tag, update settings dialog, like so. Now let's head to our div here with QAvatar, where we currently have this dark toggle here, yeah, for turning on and off the dark mode in here, which looks fantastic. But here we say now use user store and then um, show update settings dialog. And then toggle update settings dialog. Like so, but here we get an error. Why is that? Let's go to our user store again. Okay, we named it differently. And sorry for that here, of course. <laughs> this is too much in here. We can get rid of one action property. And now this should work here, yep. Let's try it out. And let's go to our Pioneer store. Let's go to our user store. Show update settings dialog. Let's see if this works. And now let's grab this and paste it in down below for our mobile navigation. Where is it? Here we have our Qtab with the avatar. Let's add on click here and let's paste it in like so. Now let's try it out. Let's go to our view dev tools. Let's go to our Pioneer store and then user here and let's see if the toggle works. Yep, it works. We are also getting a specific user which will be put into our dialog, yeah? So we pre-populate the dialog with the username and yeah. So now let's work on the implementation of the update settings dialog. So let's get back to this component. Let's close all these. Let's add a queue dialog with a V model. We need to import it, import, use user store, use user store, and then show update settings dialog, which is a boolean, responsible for toggling this dialog. In there, let's have a queue card with a queue card section. Then let's have a title in a div with a class of text 
h6 and then we have update profile in here then let's have another div and in here we have a queue uploader and for that to work we need to go to our script section and implement a few things let's get store to refs and let's get queue uploader function yeah this is a type that we need then let's import ref and our url helper now let's create two refs yeah one is username the other one is image url and then let's get our user from the pioneer store by using our user store here and store to refs now let's create a simple function update name yeah which calls update name and we pass in our user and what does update name it basically makes an put request to our backend and then it updates the user in our global store with the data that it got back from our api okay and sorry this must be used user store here and for the queue uploader to work perfectly we need another function i named it update avatar url in store and it gets access to xhr and we can use the response property to get the user yeah and then we can update the user in our global store and by doing so we will be able to show the updated profile avatar immediately yeah and now we need also another function yeah a factory function which is of type q uploader factory function it gets access to files and then we return a promise here which we resolve and here we can overwrite a few things yeah here we can say we want to use the following url where we want to send the image to then also we can provide headers yeah an authorization header with our token here yeah and then if there's some error we can log it to the console if we want to do it like this and with that we have the script section completed now let's go to our queue uploader and let's add a few props to it let's say factory is equal to factory function class is q margin top md let's make it flat outlined let's make it accept any image because we have some validation on the back end already in place color we can say is primary so we have a nice blue v model is image url v model image url then label is select your avatar and then once the image is uploaded to our backend yeah we get access to this uploaded event and here we say update avatar url in store like so and then also we can set auto upload to true so once an image is selected it will be automatically uploaded to our backend all righty nice now below this closing queue uploader tag and this closing div let's have a queue input outlined v model is equal to user.name label is username and let's make it self-closing down below let's have queue card actions and in here let's have a queue btn 
with the label of cancel. And on click, we want to do use user store toggle update settings dialog. Yep, like so. And then below this button, we have another button, QBTN, with the label of update, color primary, and on click, we execute update name, like so. Now let's try it out. Maybe we have to refresh. And we don't see anything here, huh? What's going on here? All right, up. And here we have a warning. Yeah, failed to resolve. So let's see why that is, why this component can't be resolved. Update settings dialog. This looks correct. Let's go to our main layout. We forgot to import it here. Or I thought we have done it. So let's import it like so. Now let's hit refresh. And here it is, yeah? And I would say it looks pretty amazing. Um, one thing here is, one button is flat, the other one is not. So here, the cancel button, we can also add, where is it? We have to go back to our update settings dialog and, and here we have the cancel button. We can also add flat, yeah? so we get rid of the shadow. This is your personal preference. And now let's try it out. Let's upload an avatar. And this does not work. Let's see if we get any errors. Nothing is happening here. And here, a stupid mistake by me. Here we need to make sure that this is image. Yeah, like so. And now let's try it out. And you see, it's beautifully working. Yeah, we see an image preview. And we are even seeing the progress in percent here, but we got an error. You see it's only 99%. So let's see what's happening here. Column not found. Avatar. All right. Yeah, we are sending the avatar to the backend. So let's go to our backend. Let's go to the settings controller. And here this line must be avatar URL, yeah? Because this is how we named our column here, yeah? Avatar URL. Now let's try it out again. And you see our avatar is immediately updated and here we get 100%, yeah? So this is a beautiful component I find, yeah, provided by Quasar with great functionality. And now let's go to our chat window. Here we have to hit refresh. And now you see we have our avatar here, yeah? Pretty, pretty nice. Now maybe let's update it again. Let's take this one. Yeah, here it updates in real time. We could also make it that this updates immediately as well. Now, there's one more issue. Yeah, when looking at the room list here, you see that this looks really bad, right? So we need to make sure that the image is always round, no matter what dimension it has. So let's fix that now. For that, let's go to our room list component and let's implement a CSS class here, round avatar. Let's say border radius is 50% and let's say height is 100% and width is 100%, like so. And now it's already working here because we have previously added the round avatar class to this queue image. So this looks great now, I would say. Yeah? All right, now I found a few things we still need to fix. And one example is when updating our profile avatar, it updates here, but not here in the room list. And the reason being is, let's go to view dev tools. Let's go to our Pina store. Here we have the rooms array in our room store and each room has a user's array. Yeah, And we also need to update this 
one here, yeah? And we can do it by going to our user store. And then here in update user, here we are basically only updating this.user, which is this thing here, but we also need to update the corresponding user in this users array, yeah? And we can do it by adding this piece of code and what we are doing here is we are looping over the rooms array in our room store. We are getting access to each room. We find out the user index. And then we can access a particular user in the users array and we can update him. All right, let's save it. Now let's hit refresh. And now let's try it out if it works. So I update my avatar and you see it updates in real time. Beautiful. Now one more thing you see here, yeah, that this looks pretty ugly, whereas everywhere else it looks fine. So let's fix this. For this, let's go to our room list. In here we have this round avatar class. Let's copy it and let's head to our chat window. Let's add this round avatar class down below in the style section. And now let's go to the top where we have our avatars. And here we already have applied the round avatar class and this should fix the problem. Now another thing is that we need to fix. Yeah, when updating our avatar, it works here and here, but it doesn't work here. So let's fix this as well. For that, let's go to our user store again, and we need to add another piece of code in this update user function. And that is this piece of code here. What we are doing here is we are accessing a specific room in our room store. We are going over the users array. We are getting access to each user. We are picking the specific user that we want to update. And then we update the avatar URL for it. Yeah. And we need to do this because in our Pioneer store, we have this room property here. Yeah. And this room also has users. Not only the room list here has rooms and each room has a users array, but also we have this room here. So we update, so we need to update it as well. And now let's try it out. Let's update it and it should update everywhere. Beautiful. And with that, we are done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned a few new things. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and see you in another big project.